Hello and welcome, Smite fans. It's a rough old Monday, but we are here to bring you some exciting action from our collegiate division. Today we have got Wildcats Gaming going up against RIT Esports. And joining me on the desk to break down this game ahead of time, I've got Guardian. How is it going, Guardian? Uh, I'm doing relatively well, yourself? Not too bad, and I'm excited for the game that we've got ahead of us. Two really high-performing teams here, Wildcat gaming getting a buy round doing really well in their group and the rochester institute of technology winning their first round heading into these quarterfinals looks like we've got some action coming up so is there anything that you're excited to see today uh i'm excited to see some relatively i'm trying to see some of the low-key gods you know the gods we don't really see much of i can't really give any examples as I, the only gods I can really remember are the gods that I play. And the gods that I play are the gods that everybody plays. So can't really say much on that, but it'd be nice to see some of the more low-key gods. You're right, and, and I think going into this bonus balance patch, we've got one more week of play before the big changes coming up next week. But going to the bonus balance patch, there are some changes made. We saw some of the top meta gods in solo lane, nerf, we saw some some attempts to look at some of the top gods in mid lane as well. Some of the items getting changed. Is there any anything from that that you're looking to see some mix ups in? Any any roles we were really hoping to see some shifts today? Uh, I would like to see less King Arthur, hopefully. But you know, we can always hope for less King Arthur. I don't think that's someone everyone's never said. And Kukalin, I don't think we'll be seeing as much as him due to the obviously the bonus update. Right, right. Two of those, two of the gods who I think people at least coming out of those patch notes saw as taking the hardest hits of anyone. And then, obviously, I think uh, at least looking at the SPL this week, it looks like Loki was unbanned as well from the competitive ban list after that bug seems to have been fixed. Is there? Uh, are you expecting to see any Loki today? Uh, hopefully not, because I find that quite annoying and unfun to cast. But, you know, if we do see a Loki, it'd be very unregular. But if we do, then it'd be quite fun, because obviously it's just been unbanned. It's been quite a while since we've had the luxury, or in my case, the unluxury isn't a word, so we're going to retract that. But, yeah, it'd be nice to see some of him today. Well, I guess with a god with that much stealth, you're really never going to see much of him. Uh, but we also in the mid lane saw Janus and Raijin taking a couple of hits. So those are those are two of the the top, I suppose, like early game gods, and then Janus bringing all of that utility afterwards. Is there is there anyone that you want to see mid today? Uh, I was talking about just before about that we might be seeing a Scylla ban. It's been quite a while since we've seen a Scylla because I. I wouldn't mind seeing a Scylla, although I also wouldn't mind seeing a few Hunter supports, maybe a Chiron, maybe. Right, well, with that, I think we're we're just about ready to head over onto Picks and Bands. So if, with Feed Machine over on production, if you could take us through into the draft phase and we'll get looking to see what these two teams are capable of doing. Yeah. So we've taken a, a little bit of a think about the meta and heading into this, I think Wildcat Gaming, so they've they've opted to take the first pick here and perhaps not a surprise given that they're, I, I don't want to say the favorite because we've not had a real chance to look at two of these teams properly, but certainly the team who came into this with the better seeding, they got the buy in that first round. Do you prefer, if you were coaching a team at the moment, Guardian, would you prefer to be in the first or second spot right now? I, I don't know. I think both spots have their... My brain. Positives to them. Obviously, if you're first, you get to pick the first guard. If a god got passed through, then you'd be able to pick that guard. For example, it doesn't need an example. But if you're second, and that also gives you a chance to counterpick exactly that guard, which could then put you into a downside. Right, and you also get two picks to their one early on, so you can pick you know, the, the two things they leave open, you get both of those, so it can stack your draft early. And talking about stacked, look at this ban column, Set and the Morrigan ban for Wildcat Gaming, two high-pressure picks, and, and the Morrigan 
kind of gives you whatever you want in these situations. And then on the other side, we've got Tiamat and Persephone band. And uh, it looks like a soul band coming in as well. So the mid lane, really the focus of these two two squads. Do you like what they've banned here? Uh, I think the bands are pretty, you know, basic, I would say. Soul, I, I, Soul most of the time does get through bands. I've not really seen a band that often. Morrigan, she's she's been pretty strong for the last couple of patches. Persephone, she, you know, we don't talk about that rework. And Tiamat, she's been strong since she's been launched, to be fair. And her nerfs hasn't really taken a hit against her. Well, and with that Tsukuyomi band... Looks like we're going to get to see the king, and I know you're going to be excited about this Gilgamesh pick. I am very excited. I wouldn't mind seeing a bit of Gilgamesh support today. Personally, I've been I've been playing a bit of it myself, and I find it extraordinarily fun. But I don't think we'll be seeing this as it is a competitive scene. Although we do see Chiron picked up. We do see Chiron picked up, and we have seen some Gilgamesh in the SPL support, but a triple flex god, uh, so always valuable. But yeah, Chiron and Athena picked up on the side of Rochester Institute of Technology, and those are two really strong gods in the meta. But talking of strong gods in the meta, we see Raijin and Guan Yu locked in here for Wildcat Gaming, and granted Raijin took a bit of a nerf, but this looks like it's high pressure coming out of Wildcat Gaming. Yeah, Raiden did get a bit of a nerf, but I still think he's relatively strong. Not that much of a nerf. I've got the nerfs up right here. A one second extra cooldown on his percussive storm, and his Raiju just has less of a mark duration at all ranks. So not a nerf to his damage. So he is still relatively strong. Obviously, Guan Yu, he, he's just an all-round good solo laner. Absolutely. And once you get into that team fight phase, those heals are going to be really important. So you can withdraw from the fight, heal back up, re-engage, and that can be something that teams often struggle with if they're facing against it. You called it heading into it, though. We do see a Scylla picked up, so likely a mid lane Scylla there for RIT Esports. Heading into that second ban phase, is there anything obvious that you want to see banned by either of these teams? Uh, I wouldn't say there's anything particularly obvious. I you know, Yanis got banned. I wouldn't say the he hasn't got banned, but the nerfs that came to Yanis, I wouldn't be surprised if we see... I was going to say I wouldn't be surprised if we've seen picked up, but both mid laners have already been chosen. But I wouldn't mind a few jungle bans. You know, Ratatoska, no, never mind. I take that back. But yeah, I don't know what to expect with the bans here. We do see some jungle or uh, even support bans coming out from RIT Esports as they ban away the Fenrir and the Sobek. And then on the side of Wildcat Gaming, as you asked for some more jungle bans coming through, the Kamazots and the Hunbat. I, I wonder if this is some scouting that we've perhaps not been able to have access to ourselves because, granted, I think of both of these gods as strong, but they don't perhaps leap to my mind as, say, the top meta gods in the jungle, things like your Nemesises and your Peles. I still don't know, do you think those jungle, like the Fenrir, if that's a jungle band, do you feel like that's wasted if they've already got a Gilgamesh locked in? Uh, I, I do kind of feel like it's a tad bit of a waste. As Fenrir, he, don't get me wrong, we do see him in support. I can hear Evo in the distance screaming at me, but I just don't think he's that strong of a support. That might just be me, but I don't think he's that good of a support, especially when you've got a high damage comp. Well, I think we're going to have to agree to disagree there. I'm, I'm quite the fan of the Fenris support myself. And talking of supports, it looks like RIT Esports have locked in the Ymir. And... That means that that Athena isn't going to be playing in the sport, or presumably. I know that Ymir can <laughs> solo on jungle as well, in the same way that Athena can. But oh, to no, my mind, Ymir is a is a sol rock solid support, and so uh, interesting selection there for me. Yeah, I don't know. We did her feed machine just backstage talking about how strong Ymir is, and we might be able to see some of that strength. But we are seeing a a third jungler could be with Pele. How do I, you... I absolutely agree. I, and I think this is going to be the jungler here for RIT Esports since those magic shell nerfs on 8.6. This god has leapt up and is, I think, ready and primed to be the top meta of jungler. Yeah. 
Uh, we do see Ares and Anne Hurt picked, though, by Wildcat. I think both of them are relatively strong. Would you care to say anything about this? Well, so for me, the Ares pick is interesting because you've got a couple of important dashes. Presumably, if you're looking at that as the duo lane, the Chiron and the Athena, that Ares is going to be important to, to help lock those down. But other than that, it's it's an aggressive lane. And so looking at these these comps now, Guardians, we've got these all locked in. Is is there a comp you're favoring? Is there a strategy leaping to mind that either of these teams are able to do better than the other that you want to see come out? Where where's your where's your feeling going heading into this game? Well my feeling in general is heading you know you know me haunted. I'm a I really dislike Gilgamesh, if you get what I'm saying. So I'm kind of going towards Wildcat, but I do feel like RIT, they've just got a pretty unique comp. Obviously, they've they've combined everything that's relatively good right now, just put it in a comp, and you can't say that, you know, you don't respect them for that, at least a little bit. I mean, I... I... <laughs> You're right that he's a new god, but we've seen this god nerfed at every opportunity since his release. So uh, he must be doing something right, and and I'm I'm not surprised that competitive teams have latched onto that. Is is there a ga- uh, squad here that you think is going to take the early game? Do you think these teams are looking to go late? What's what's the plan? I feel like in general, you know, I'm I'm once again looking at the Gilgamesh, but Gilgamesh is very strong early game, whereas the Scylla. In the mid lane, the Chiron, both of them, I haven't played Chiron much. I'm quite a big fan of Scylla, but I haven't played Chiron much. And I think he does take, obviously he's an ADC, but I think he takes one of the longer ADC to power up to his. I'm going to wreck everything. I think it takes a, he takes a bit longer to get to that stage. So I think Wildcat might have the advantage here. It's it's certainly possible uh, looking into this, but but if they're able to take out, if you're able to take that into the late game, then there is a chance for them to win it. So with you've heard Guardians' verdict, and uh, with that, I think we're just about ready to throw down to the game. We've got TJ, DJ, and Sir Waffles there to to guide you through all of the action. So TJ, take it away. Thank you so much, Haunting. Welcome, my fans, to the other videos. TJ, DJ, and Waffles alongside me for this one. Game number one, quarterfinals, a best of three in front of us. And uh, Waffles, the talk on the desk just before we went into picks and bands was very much on uh, what do we expect to see kind of in the mid-season pack coming up. Now we are still on the bonus pack, so what, what are we making of these compositions? I really do like the compositions coming out from both teams here. Wildcat Gaming going for a very, very heavy frontline composition with the Gilgamesh, Guan Yu, and the Ares. But also, our IT sports not really contesting it too much. I think the Athena Scylla is a, an all-time classic, very strong combo, and they have a lot of things that can burn the bees on the side of our IT esports, whereas Wildcat, they've got a very heavy execution comp because for me personally i think chiron is one of the best adcs at the start of the game with the bluestone trans that is generally being built because you can output so much damage pairing that with an athena it's also guaranteed damage Ares, he's really gonna have to hit the chains in the support role to really keep that lane even yeah just ha- as you say looking at these are two duo lanes Chiron and the ymir as well like just just looking at both of these duo lanes we're expecting some fireworks early on as uh, you point out as well the blue stone current is just it's a lot of damage I'm not gonna lie that level two is kind of nutty but uh for agent blur on uh wildcat gaming has opted for the hunter's cowl uh on the pick as well and this is uh, a pick that we have been seeing pop up every now and again as uh, there is kind of still that discussion on of um you know which is the better starting item for ad carries since we're well no longer in the uh, arrow meta personally i think you can still get away with the arrow meta but hunter's cow on this and her is a excellent item to really go into it gives him a little bit of life still at the start of the game where he wants to be stuck in that transcendence so he's got a little bit more sustain than the chiron oh. chiron only oh we had fight 
Yeah, we just had the fight there and the early game coming out here for Wildcat Gaming. First blood in the mid lane going over towards Trizzle on that Gilgamesh. Raijin and a Gilgamesh is just a god combination. Like, let's talk about the fireworks in Duel Lane. This is just early game kill. Something is going to die and it is going to be a pick onto Cyzerx on the Pella. What happens as a result of this? Well, with Opella, that means that uh, the Duel Lane for Wildcat Gaming is able to push into the jungle secure away those oracles get a little bit more xp as a uh, side is trying to get uh, something going over on the mid lane as well but looks like just stuck under tower here we are in the solo lane as well with this athena as well going to get up against the guan yu but uh no no real damage no real danger for now but uh a fantastic start for wildcat gaming and uh probably yeah it's the best they could have hoped for getting that early kill on gilgamesh as I think they're looking for a little bit more of a fight yeah. here. But... but yeah, getting that early kill on Gilgamesh is going to be essential for his jungle. A little bit of a difference in the start of the jungle. Having that mace gives Gilgamesh that a little bit of extra power. The boot allows Pele to rotate a lot more. So I'm expecting once Pele sort of hits five, she's going to have a lot more impact than the Gilgamesh because of the boot rush. But at the moment, she's here fighting for her back camps. You saw the blink was uh, committed there. The eruption does not find the knock up. And Gilgamesh is able to escape. You see, the first the uh, Vahita is in a uh, position to assist to try and uh, retake some of this jungle. Secure uh, the blue buff as well. Trissel has to walk away. Bit of damage on towards uh, Lil King DJ on this Raijin. But uh, hey, this is a free red buff. As uh, looks like we're just going to have a little bit of a calm before the storm as uh, buffs are all coming off cooldown. So let's secure them and see where else we go from here. Something else to mention that I've just noticed, Ares has selected to go for full reinforced boots. It's something I'm expecting to see a lot more coming up in the next sort of patch once boots is no longer a required item. But foregoing a starter item means he can go later into the game without necessarily having the XP loss that most of the support starter items give you. So it's going to be very interesting to see once he hits 5 if he's going to really be able to make an impact. Because he is going into a lot of CC immunals. You have Pele with this every... Nope, um, I will sound myself corrected. Everyone has a CC immunal and there's a few beasts to be popped. So it's going to be very interesting to see where these ults are going to pr apply pressure. Yeah, and uh, as of right now, in terms of uh, just the bees as well, there is only going to be two on the side of uh, RIT, which you can see on uh, Blue Biohazard and the first Enchilada on the Scylla. But as you said, CC Immunity uh, does come in spades for this composition. So it does mean we get to see some of the blinks, and we have been seeing them come in as well. Blinks are already on cooldown across both teams as well, looking for the pick, looking for that advantage. But uh, for now, we approach this uh, sort of uh, weird mid-game area where we go into a very early three versus three in the mid lane. You can see Wildcat Gaming pushing into the right-hand side jung jungle. They have mid priority right now, so they're pretty free to do this. But no one is uh, willing to engage just yet. Might just be a bit of posturing, if anything. It'll be interesting to see if RIT Esports pick up the hint that has just been dropped once they seal Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh can, in the jungle generally goes into a little bit of a bruiser build, but picking up that blade which offers him the Wing Demon Crypt would be as his third item. That is going to be huge amounts of damage, but he's not going to be as tanky. So if they can notice that and really target that out, Gilgamesh could be falling a little bit behind as we have a little bit of kill in mid lane. Yeah, it was uh, just answering back that kill from early on. It is going to go on to Noble on the Ymir. Feels good for the support player, but you probably wanted to see that gold go over towards uh, first the Enchilada as well. Just make up for it. Assist money is nice, but not quite a uh, full kill. And uh, we also saw over on the left-hand side, Sizex did commit the Volcanic Lightning, but unable to find a purchase onto Agent Blur. I mean, Anher is pretty safe as uh, hunters go. So, you know... Committing it, trying to, again, it's just showing that both of these teams are trying to find just a little bit. They're trying to find something that they can jump on. Speaking of, as the Frostbite will land, there's a stun. It's going to force out the beads to get uh, Trizzle out of there. Centaurus not going to find the kill either. But this is a half health Gilgamesh in full retreat back to the jungle. The squad is back to, uh, to save him. But again, more action. Just waiting for that next kill. It's going to be a lot of reaction gameplay here as we have a 
a little bit of engagement in me, but nothing comes of it. So they targeted the Anher, and as you said, Anher was playing extremely safe, but they have a lot of characters that can now dive onto the Anher once that ultimate is down, once that leap is down, once those speeds are down. So judging from that first sort of gank, I'm expecting a little bit more fights to come through the ADC lane. These mid 3v3 fights, I, because of the amount of CC me nults, I don't think Ares really has too much pressure in here. I'm, Mm. I think the easiest lane to really apply pressure and try and get someone ahead so you can start rotating is going to be this ADC lane. As Nafina versus Guan Yu solo has just been pretty much, we're going to get farm and then we're going to make impact later on in the game. Yeah, well, there is that rotation. As you call, looking for Agent Blow. It's going to leap away, but there's the follow through from Sai. He's trying to find the damage, but he's going to be traded under the tower. Probably the best he could have hoped for if your name is Agent Blur on the Arnher one for one so far as uh, the. Uh, Melly Fump is going to look for some damage. Meanwhile, Drizzle is here having a bit of a uh, boxing match with the Ymir. Going to throw down the wings of Shamash to lock up this Ymir. Goes into the ice shots. Everyone back away, back away. There we go. Good, good, good. Low health Ymir. I mean, come on. Fire is uh, pretty damn effective against the Ymir. But, oh, okay. No, going to force out the ultimate instead. But Noble turns it. Completely. Trizzle was on the wrong side of the wall. As here come the mid laners. Lil King DJ getting that first pick onto Noble's return. Enchilada's there taking down a jungler. I'm a monster. Will go wide. But this fight, this entire game just takes an explosive point in this uh, second act. Ares making the outstanding play of just trying to keep the pressure on the Ymir. And that kill was there to be taken. But the Chiron ultimate ultimately ends up coming in clutch and absolutely saving the Ymir's life. Then the rotation from the mid lane and the jungler coming through. Not really able to find anything else in the follow-up. But Pegale diving into the Anher and doing a one-for-one -one trade. As much as I would like to say that would benefit Pele, Anher forego went boots and started stacking transcendence so five stacks on transcendence mm. before your chiron can even get transcendence online this is going to be a huge power spike for her you can see that uh starting to pay dividends to level lead over on blue biohazard is even going to be a full rotate over for wildcat gaming towards this mid lane this is a collapse onto first the angelada got nowhere to go stuck between a rock and a hard place the rest of the team is there Ymir was not back, but uh, looking DJ with the percussive storm able to pick that one up. It's two kills completely unanswered. And Wildcat Gaming are not done yet. They instantly win the fight and are pushed into that left hand side jungle. Red buff is going to look to be stolen away. There's an engage looking towards Sizex. This Pele has not had the best of games, and it's going to be another trip back to spawn. Uh, Fairly from on the Ares. The blink follow up, but not enough to catch up with this. Uh, Chiron really utilizing the horse part of Chiron just to escape from that one. But it's encouraging size for Wildcat Gaming. They're going to turn attention towards that uh, Gold Fury Scorpion as well. Take the Oracles. This is uh, quite a nice gold lead and experience leader they're starting to get here. Beginning to extend out, but the lead is mainly focused on that mid lane Rige, and he's got the two level lead on the Scylla, but everywhere else seems to be roughly even. The one thing I would be slightly concerned about is the Pele and the Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh has been a part of five of these six kills, and the amount of slows he can provide in this kit is really helping his team out, but he's not transitioning that into a lot of experience. Although Pele has had a really bad start to the game, she's not exactly falling behind mm. the Gilgamesh like you'd expect. Absolutely, yeah. Three trips back to the spawn, but uh, you know, Pele with the uh, the boot start and also just well, Pele's kit as well, able to negotiate the jungle, even steal away some of that XP from the left hand side. Will mean there is a level lead trying to chase down, but meanwhile, over on solo lane, there was a gank coming through by Trizzle, able to take down Firsty Fajita, but Sizerx punished in the jungle, stayed a little bit too far, and it's going to be yet another kill going over to this Raijin, 4-0 and 1. Started to stack that Chiron's coin as well. This could uh, definitely be bothersome for uh, RIT Esports if this Raijin gets out of control. A little scary when a Raijin begins to get killed, and now the Chiron is going to be stacking, he's going to be moving a little bit quicker, but Scylla has got slightly more stacks to finish in it early instead of, once mm. again, electing to rush the item rather than boots. You lose a little bit of safety, but if you can participate in those kills, we're going to have another little red buff invade coming out, so every buff is being contested and invaded at the moment. Yeah, and that's uh, more credit for the junglers as well. Any opportunity, anything available, it's going to be a thunder crush out for uh, Loki and DJ. 
not really anyone around to punish that cooldown being used. It looks like we're going to have a little bit of a reset as well. So Wildcat Game are going to go back into the jungle. I mean, there's camps up, there's buffs up. Uh, hey, they need to be taken. So let's go and do it. And I want to take this opportunity uh, for our 10, well, slash 11 minutes uh, item check here. So as you say, uh, we've got the Karen's coin being picked up in both of the mid lanes here. Having a look over towards the solo lane as well. Not really had to talk that much about it. It's a bit of a wet noodle fight between the two, especially with a uh, breastplate of Valor being completed by the Athena. A uh, first is uh going to be pretty comfortable in that lane now, uh, just off that item pick up alone, I feel. With one, you healing the lane becomes pretty much a stalemate, and it's going to be whoever can really mm. rotate out of that lane first. And judging by the fact that there's a tower already gone in that lane, that could be the Guan Yu as the air result comes through. Yeah, it's going to get the ultimate uh, out, landing onto the Ymir. Centaurus was committed as well, just to dissuade any further follow-up by Wildcat Gaming, but that is a big cooldown to play around for the Chiron as well. It is a huge part of his kit. It's, you know, it's one of the reasons that he's uh, looked at quite favorably as well. God Fury was being teased. It's going to be back away, but there is the engage coming through. While Trisle throws down the wins, so it's going to be re rewarded with a kill onto Noble as they're starting to group up. Tycho drums over the top, looking for damage. It's going to take down the Pele. That is a rampage for Lil King DJ on this Raijin. Blue Biohazard answers back, but a double kill for Raijin to answer in kind as Wildcat Gaming starts to just pile on the kills that is a four a four one four kills at the cost of a gilgamesh and this gold fury is their worth is their worthy reward and you've just seen that in that team fight the scary side of gilgamesh the fact that gilgamesh can leave in and try and delete characters he applies slow so you can't get away but he also provides his team a speed boost that once he leaps in if they're walking towards gilgamesh they're going to close that distance very quickly mm. and you've seen in that team fight how that plays out you have no time to react and they've just played it absolutely perfectly with wildcat gaming picking up all the kills with gold fury and possibly a t1 tower in the left hand side and we also seen it in that fight guan yu actually started to rotate earlier than yafina but the yafina ult comes in and is able to really start the fight but they weren't able to follow up any damage still it's not really online raijin is the powerhouse at the moment mm. And I think that's uh, just, well, uh, I think you might agree with me. It's just the nature of these two gods. Now you're going to see Scylla slightly weaker in that early game. I'm a monster. Not going to pick up Trizzle, who is, uh, I mean, after that death, he's not going to have any god available. But the big target on the head is definitely going to be a looking DJ on this Raiji. Now he's six kills. That is a nice chunk of gold to whoever is going to be finding that killing blow whenever that is going to be. But for now, hey, that's a lot of gold to spend. Have a few resets coming out and let's let's have a look at what is being bought here. I'm noticing the Atti, but I'm also seeing a tank over towards this Guangyu Volcanic Lightning committed to taunt and Size X will be able to collect that kill. There's a blink through as a uh, Trixler is going to be the next target. This Ymir looking for the pick, but the advance over the wall is going to be absolutely fine and dandy. But it is a kill. It is putting this Guangyu behind. RT trying to get back into this game. And RT are doing the correct thing. They're trying to just keep the farm and keep the pressure where they can. I actually think the later this game goes, the better the advantage they have against this Raijin. Because if you have a Guan Yu, you have a Gilgamesh, Ooh. you have the Ares. Uh, we have just a little bit of a freeze yeah. coming out. Uh, they're free front lines, yes, but they're three very aggressive front lines. There's not going to be a lot of kill for your back line and her and Raijin. So if Pele can start making an impact, because we have a little kill coming out. Yeah, it just looked like uh, Versi Fajita was trying to find the flank from that right-hand side jungle. But problem is, though, when you go for the aggressive flank, when you're, well, technically in the other in the other half of the map, that is Wildcat Gaming territory. And it's just a punish there where, of where that Athena is. The core comes out, probably a missing. Uh, not really seeing... Actually, yeah, there is a ward as well. I have feel that's where the Athena was spotted. But uh, the attention is now being turned towards this mid-tier 1 tower. It's going to be tanked up by uh, a fairly thumb there. But there's the uh, engage from the uh, Gilgamesh. Comes in from right-hand side field as Agent Blur. Welcome to the game. Finds two kills uh, on the back of that one. A huge engage by Trizzle on this Gilgamesh. I would, it would surprise me if Gilgamesh is even like letting any more drafts 
from just this set as well. 16 kills to 6, averaging just over a kill a minute. Marco Gaming turning on the style. Not going to fire giant just yet, but they're going to burn away this jungle just in case. And you can say, oh, averaging a kill a minute here, but Gilgamesh has been a part of 13 of these kills. Yeah. Raijin has been a part of 13 of these kills. You can see exactly where, oh, sorry, Ares has been a part of mm. 12, and sorry, is Anho. You can see they are fighting exactly as a team. They have a target. They're going in as a team, and they're just catching our, our IT esports out. One person gets picked, unfortunate, but then no one's able to really escape no one's got mm. a backup plan and they're just losing pressure and pressure and right now wildcat gaming have all the control they could ever wish for and really approaching a, i think it's a 7k lead at this stage uh yeah I'd, I'd say that's a give or take you know 7k um just got a little bit of a quick map stare for that one but uh, just looking at the fight as well i say it's very well played by wildcat gaming i do feel that uh, for rt esports i mean i can't really blame them personally when that gilgamesh jumps into your back line it's it feels more like the comms at that point just become panic alarm bells are going oh my word oh my word there, there is a gilgamesh you know on my face i am going to die right now and wildcat gaming they're just thriving in that environment able to pick off players isolate them one by one or well two at a time if your name's agent blur in that one 517 on the on her and with the completion of the assi and that fully stacked transcendence i'm looking forward to uh, seeing what agent blur can do in these team fights but uh, the rest of the team you know have got him covered either way yep like you said just agent Blur is really beginning to come into his own on this and her, but something I've just noticed and want to point out, Athena in the solo lane, we mentioned the support that the taunt can really bring in and provide an impact in fights. Athena was forced to go beads for a little bit of safety in that solo lane, so they have yet to get a real team fight relic on. Whereas if we're looking at Wildcat, they've got a frenzy on that Ares, so once mm. Ares says we're going, we're <laughs> going, and there's nothing RIT can really do to stop it. I need to see the Ymir hit level 12 to see what sort of support relic he picks up. And it's maybe that can provide a little bit of a turning circle for his team here. But it's going to be really rough only having that one support relic for your mm. whole team. You are pretty much relying on just the uh, mobility. But uh, here's, well, one of the problems first, the enchilada is going to be the first pick here. Trizzle getting another pick on the board. The ice shards will spell doom for Noble as well on this Ymir. Only Fury up as well, just to make sure that this pressure game carries on uh, on perfect course, shall we say. As the only, only uh, Fury is going to be started up. Trizzle on zoning duty. Blue Bio has just not allowed anywhere near this postcode to get anywhere near that to only Fury. You gotta respect, you know, that Centaurus does go through walls. That is a potential steal, but RT Sports will take the opportunity to go pick up a Pyromancer. Although Walker Gaming are on the way very quickly, they want, but they want to get out of dodge right now. They need to leave. They need to get out. No, run. Run right now because there's the cavalry charge. There's the follow-up. Defender of Olympus going to be used yeah. to get the Pele back and keep that Avena to safety. But uh, here comes Agent Blair. A very nice impale onto the wall. There's the free pickup as well onto Pella. The Tycho drums not going to find damage. Raiju with the slow. Get another slow from the pillar. You know, on the backside, Trizzle is going to take uh, a nice heavy chunk as um, Blue Biohazard and Noble were able to well, just find some return damage. But uh, Wildcat Gaming, they are in the driver's seat for this one. And they're making it look easy. Great idea to try and steal the Pyromancer and get some XP back for your team. But once you know you've been caught out of a position, Athena needs to ult right back to base. Pele, you kind of need to accept that you've Died, run up the lane and try and clear those own new minions so you can give your team a little bit of relief of the pressure. And while this fire giant gets started up, just something for you guys out there in the chat. If you ever watch this game back, keep an eye on Gilgamesh because I've noticed it throughout the game and I've not been able to take notes and team, but he's changed about four items in that build. Because he started with that Shuriken to get a little bit more attack speed. He sold that, he went into a bow and that's been sold. His items have been bought and sold all over the place, and it's going to be very interesting to see if you ever watch this back where the power spikes really occur and how those items affect him because he's absolutely running this game at the moment. And uh, again, you know, it's a very good point that you make and talked about item power spikes as well. I mean, Gilgamesh, though, just seems like early on that first 10 minutes, Gilgamesh is uh, either going to be the absolute well, king of the world or going to be uh, stuck in the shadows. 
But uh, this was definitely the the good version uh, that we saw for Wildcat Gaming. You see, uh, that relic that uh, the Ymir was going to pick up is going to be Heavenly Wings as well. An interesting choice, but uh, I mean, hey, there's so many slows coming out uh, for Wildcat Gaming. Just pop the wings, try and get out of there, try and regroup, and maybe try and find something out of this team fight because. I mean, you look at that gold lead, you look at the experience, it's starting to hit a few level 20s as well. RIC Esports going to need to pull off something huge to get back into this one. And they've started to have the right tools for the job. I love the Ymir going into the sprint to really get his team out of there, but I think he needs to upgrade that as soon as possible. Uh, as Oh, Gilgamesh just about catches him out and... I don't yeah, know the, if get out of this. The drop, the drop kick didn't find the stun, but that's why we have an impale into the ice shards that go. Once again, going to spell the doom for that one. The uh, unfortunately, on a team is already far behind. A level 13 Ymir is just a free kill at this point. Had those stats at this point, but it does mean this uh, Phoenix uh, fight is going to be taken at a numbers disadvantage for RIT Esports. Saying that though, Lilkin DJ is currently pushing out the mid lane. And that means four members over towards the left-hand side. RT Esports do need to respond with all four members, though. Logan just pushes that wave. It looks like Sizex is going to be the one to deal with it. But that means that the the Q to engage is going to be there. Cavalry charge. A very nice taunt coming out from 30 Fajita. The I'm a monster as well. Not going to find much as the Scylla is pushed into there. Defender of Olympus. But they're all stuck inside the winds as Wildcat Close. Gaming find the first pick onto the mid laner. So you see Fahiza having to run away solo off and Wildcat Gaming just going to chase this one. I probably get another kill but uh, no it looks like it's going to be a bit of safety here but the first Phoenix did fall in left side. The second Phoenix falls and it looks like we are going to get a little bit of a completionist run but this one the third Phoenix to make sure that Titan is well, extra squishy for this next fight as well. The clock is definitely ticking now for IT Esports. The end is not nigh though. Looks like Wildcat Gaming will pull away, spend a bit of that gold, burn the jungle, and go again. I'm playing it safe here. I understand you don't want to give too much away, but you have a 13k gold lead. Even if you wipe at Titan, I don't think there's anything RIT can really do to come back into it maybe they get one or two towers so i think the end call possibly could have been there but playing it safe going back and mm. spending gold in hand is always a wiser option you see and also with the uh xp as well some of the level 20s coming up so the upgraded uh cowl by the looks of things down there for uh agent blur we're actually not opted to go for the upgraded conduit gem just yet but uh, happy to spend some of that gold and get a uh, second tier. Okay, yeah, there's the upgraded uh, the upgraded gem. Picked up by the Raijin and an Obsidian Shard as well. Just to make sure the uh, Picasso Storm is going to hurt. Well, just everything's going to hurt. Thank you, a production gem of Focus, the completed level 20 item. But it's Raijin. A lot of painful items are going to be coming out mm. on Wildcat Gaming, and the way these fights have gone, it's kind of just been an absolute, I would say, masterclass from Wildcat Gaming. Because Ymir is the only one that can shut down exactly what they want to do in a team fight. If it's a 5v5 team fight, I think Ymir can get a couple of people out, but they've been managing to pick him off consistently when he's just been caught out of his just by the slightest of margins. And once that Ymir is out of the fight, no one can stop them doing exactly what they want to do. RIT just have that Athena, which one taunt, and that's all. That's all they mm. have to burn through. You've got beads, you've got DC immune ults, where you can just say, no, I don't want to be taunted here. And that's it. There's nothing else to follow up. And that's that follow-up damage, which I think RIT Esports, when you just look at this draft on paper, is perhaps what they're relying on. You're looking for Thirsty for Heater to find that absolute god-tier uh, taunt into an armor monster into the centaur it's into you know eruption volcanic lightning this wombo combo it's pretty much all that rt have got right now because they're still lagging behind in terms of that xp and a fire giant as well going away of wildcat gaming second of the day second of the match of two 100 completion on those fire giants rt esports can't get anywhere near they have to deal with these waves three lanes of fire minions uh, it's going to be rough. I think this might just be the end call. Yeah, Scylla doing well to push 
the left lane up about halfway, but there's still fire minions pouring onto that Titan from right and center. And it's just going to be one bite and blink engage from the Ares come yeah. through. Gonna look for it, but uh, there's all the CC immunity pop. The Iron Monster came out, but no one takes any meaningful damage. The Titan is the call, the Titan is the focus, and that is what falls for Wildcat Gaming. They will take game number one against RIT Esports in pretty explosive fashion 22 kills to six. And uh, I think we could both agree for game one of a best of three that is how you want to do it because it all goes on to RIT esports is where like waffles where do we look here do we, do we look at draft do we look at uh, how they're like the macro play the mechanical play like what do we need to see in game two for me it was just gilgamesh controlled the game and the pace of the game and RIT had no way sort of back into it so it was a little bit on the draft but I still think the early game, they showed a little bit of pressure. They just weren't able to transition any of their sort of team fights into anything. They weren't able to get really any picks in the fight. Anytime RIT died, it was just because we've extended too much, but we've killed five of them. It is a concerning signs, but uh, hey, I mean, I've said it enough times. This is a best of three. So RIT Esports still have one game in the bank to uh take for this one hopefully you know they are gonna have to do it the hard way though if they want to advance into the semi-finals it will have to be a reverse sweepers against a oh, incredibly good looking wildcat gaming team it looks like our desk is ready to break this one down further so we're gonna throw it away back well throw it back to haunting and guardian so much tj dj and so waffles what a game and a strong showing there by wildcat gaming so guardian what did you see what did you like uh, i saw a lot of things i like in fact we heard i was looking in the broadcast chat and we also heard tj dj say about if a couple of times but the gilgamesh's general ruling of the game and the amount of build difference sheets he did around the match. We saw him get Shuriken from his passive, drop it, get a bow, drop the bow. And it was, you can tell he's played Gilgamesh quite a few times. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I like the way that Gilgamesh passive works quite often. I've, I've had some games where I've got real lucky off of that passive before and others where, again, you know, you'll take some free stats and then use it to get towards your next item. I, I want to talk to you about this Gilgamesh a little bit more. When we look at that stat line there of the jungler, 4, 2, and 15, and early on we see Gilgamesh doing the things that you expect a warrior jungle to do, run people down and get kills, but that stat line isn't really your traditional jungler stat line. You're used to seeing those high kills on, on your assassin junglers. And, and here we're getting those high assists. So do you like that facilitating style that, that T. Trezor brought to the game? Uh, I feel like it with Gilgamesh, he played it really well. I feel like maybe he wanted more kills than he could have gotten. But at the end of the day, as long as you're mid laner, you're Anher, you know, these important damage roles, the roles which are meant to get <laughs> the kills the kills obviously junglers are meant to get some of the kills too so they can carry the game on for their team but when you're playing a warrior jungle like gilgamesh you're more of a secondary tank than a full-on damage role right yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't perhaps quite say a secondary tank if we look at this build with with just 15 of each pro and the protector passive but you're right you're definitely taking on that uh that similar role that the solo lane is taking in terms of diving for sure. And and talking of solo laners, I mean, we got to see this Guan Yu come into effect with those seven assists later, but I felt like the Athena lock-in in the draft, we were really excited to see what this Athena could do. And it, it felt kind of unimpactful. Do you want to see them go back to this Athena or would you rather just see it banned in the next game? I don't know. From a general viewer point of view, as I am watching it just like the rest of you at home. Uh, this, it was pretty boring to watch. From a viewer point of view, I wouldn't want to see it again. But if they do manage to pull it off, it'd be pretty interesting. But in general, I wouldn't want... You know, if we see it banned, yeah, that's fair. But if we see it played, I want it to be played. I don't want it to be 
oh, I'm in the solo lane and I'm irrelevant. I want I want the Athena we're used to seeing. And Athena ruling the duo lane, decimating anything in sight with the help of three of their teammates. Mm-hmm. And this did look like a strong driver's seat kind of game from Wildcat Esports. It was high pressure throughout. And granted, we saw some signs of life in the early from, from RIT, but is there something you want to see from them coming into the second game? Is there is there a way that you'd pick this squad up and, and get them going for a game two? I think the first thing they need to do is swap out the Pele. If we're having another... If we're having another game like that, I don't think the Pele needs to be played. I think that the Pele got picked off once a couple of times and then and met, and then kept on building like they were, you know, winning, decimating. The Soul Reaver is a great example of this. There's no reason to build Soul Reaver when you're behind, as you're not going to be aggressive enough to chances are when you're three levels behind and you're one and four, you're not going to have a chance to get the Soul Reaver bill or just in general use it enough to, for it to be a useful item. Well, the, the big issue there is that when you build Soul Eater, before it's fully stacked, that's only 20 physical power and yeah. that's not going to help you come back from a deficit particularly, as you say. We've got picks and bans ready for you, so we're going to head on over to those. Is there anything that you want to see banned? From Wildcat Esports to give RIT, a, sorry, Wildcat Gaming even to give RIT a chance here. Uh, my brain cut out for a second. Do you mind just repeating that? Yeah. Is there is there anything you want to see? Any high priority bans that you think? Hey, Wildcat Gaming shouldn't be allowed the Gilgamesh again or the Ares again. What do you <laughs> What do you want to see RIT take away from them? You said it yourself. I don't think it would be a good idea to see the Gilgamesh. The Gilgamesh. As I said before, that Gilgamesh has clearly played him a lot and learned all the things you can do with him. So I wouldn't like to see, if I were RIT, I wouldn't like to see a Gilgamesh here. But they are going to opt in for the type, for the tier map ban, which is no surprise. They certainly are. And I think early on, we were perhaps looking at this tier map as a very high skill ceiling god, lots of abilities, but... With the power of that split push, she's certainly become one of the top players in this meta, and I imagine we're going to have to wait for a few more nerfs before we see a bit more of Tiamat. On the side of Wildcat Gaming, though, we're seeing that soul band away. Uh, do, you, do you like the soul here, or do you think this is too high priority? Uh, I think soul is very good right now. She's... My offense on soul mains right there, but I don't think she takes the highest amount of skill. And she's relatively easy to pick up, you know? Just use that solar burst, bang, 300, 400 damage. That's a good, like, quarter of a health for an ADC, and she's very strong with that. And her ultimate, allowing her to CC all damage and being a decent amount of damage with the CC immune that she, the CC damage immune that she gets too with her three, it just makes her an unstoppable goddess if you let her get good. Mm-hmm. Well, focus remaining on the mid lane here for RIT Esports as they take away the Raijin and the Persephone. And uh, good to see that Raijin banned away, whereas Wildcat Gaming banning away the set and the Gilgamesh, perhaps thinking that since we're not first pick, we can't guarantee getting that Gilgamesh back again. I, do you think you'd rather have seen them left that open and, and dared Riot, RIT Esports to take it, or are you happy with them banning it here? Well, see, I'm just looking at bads ahead of time. But oh, they did ban Gilgamesh, but they managed to pick up the Athena, which uh, Athena can make a relatively big impact, if not as big as an impact as Gilgamesh in the early game, you know, making, getting those pulls in the early game, putting that disarm brew ahead. So I feel like I would have liked a Gilgamesh again, once again, big fan. But I, I, I yeah, it's a relatively good ban. We do see Chiron, Athena, and Danzaburo as your first three picks here. And RIT Esports not waiting around in this draft. They are picking quickly. We see Kuchol and Giannis picked up here. So they have locked in the mid and the ADC, both their carries in position here. And presumably their solo laner here with the Kuchol. And do you like this top three here for our RIT Esports? Uh, Chiron, we saw him last game. He was. Uh... 
pretty effective last game, to be fair. We saw we saw them go one and two, which is not as good as I thought it was, but still pretty good for their team. And he was he was doing pretty well for them. I don't think it's I don't think he was doing well enough for them to pick him up again. We do see Kakulin though, which and he is very strong. He he did get nerfed at the bonus patch for eight point six, if I'm correct. Yeah, I'm correct with that. And yeah, he is still relatively strong with only the alt and his rage mode. Like when he goes into the rage mode, that shield that he gets being nerfed. And Yanis, he's so strong. He did get a nerf to his ultimate. So he, you know, yeah. Indeed. Yana. And Wildcat Gaming do the same themselves, locking in the Dunzaburu and the Merlin, both their carries, and we're racing through this band phase. Ares and Ymir banned away by Wildcat Gaming, so it's both of the Guardians we saw last game in the support role. And then RIT Esports banning away the Guan Yu and the Sukayomi. So Wildcat Gaming going to the Sobek, and I don't know about you, Guardian, but I feel like I banned Sobek before I ban Ares and Ymir in these kind of games. This god is absolutely incredible hey. still. Yeah, he is, he's been on the same level as Athena for quite a while. But if anything, Athena came to his level. And yeah, he's he's been highly rated for quite a while. Although we do see a Emoja picked up for RIT Esports. She's pretty strong right now. How do you feel about her? I, I, I agree. I think Emoja is pretty strong. I think she dropped off a little bit of the beginning of the season. Perhaps people still learning the choke points on the new map, things like that. And, and the rise of other Guardians, be it the Sobek, the Ymir, even the Cerberus early on, but certainly risen back to prominence. So we've seen some strong play from her at the top levels of the game. So I always think if you can play Yamoja, she's one of the best Guardians in the game. And if you can't, then she's a little bit of dead weight. Yeah, if you don't, if you have an, an experienced Yamoja, she can be one of the weaker gods. Uh, so Wukong, we've seen him get nerfed. He was Kakolin's counterpart. Why do you think we've we're seeing Wildcat pick Sun Wukong up, even though he's been nerfed pretty hard? Well, it's just it's just the two that's been nerfed, the Master's Will, which I think is often the ability that everyone forgets about when they're playing Sun Wukong. Anyway, you focus a lot on the seventy-two transformations, the Somersault Cloud, even the the Cudgel. For me, this god I think is one of the best gods in the solo lane. I think there was a. A, a possibility that he was even a little bit better than Arthur and Kukulin in that meta that we had on the last patch. But now with those two taking heavy nerfs, Sun Wukong is in a really good position. He still uses Bluestone really well. He can use Fighter's Mask. His build has a lot of flexibility in it. He can play a lot of damage, dive well. And if you've already got Sobek and Athena on your team, you don't need your solo laner to be nearly as tanky. So you can get away with this mobile damagey solo laner that Sun Wukong offers you. Great pick here from Wildcat Gaming. True, almost like an opposite of Gilgamesh, if you will. Gilgamesh plays the kind of middle of a sub of a tank and a damage, whereas Sun Wukong, he's less of a tanky warrior, and he does do really good damage, especially in that mid game when he finally starts to get online. And he, I think, he would do pretty well against this Hunbats if he tries to get Hunbats. He's he's relatively squishy. He can just use that magical cudgel. Smash him. Oh no, I've been altered. I'm going to go into my cloud. See you in five seconds. And I think that's that's the concern for, for Wildcat Gaming, or sorry, for RIT Esports here, is they've picked the Hunbats. But on the other side, you've got CC immune ults from really four of the five enemy gods. So it is just this Merlin that's at risk of being caught out often by the Hunbats. Do you like that pick here? Uh, I feel like the Humber, I'm just trying to look at it from a different point of view, but yeah, I can't really see any use for the Humbats, or even Merlin, if he's, if he's prepared for a Humbats, he can always just be like, he can just blink, it's not, yeah, he can just straight blink away from it, don't get me wrong, it's a short blink, so the Humbats will still be able to carry on with it if he's not already in tower, but I feel like... Everybody that he would be targeting with it has some sort of a defense, except the Design Brew can, or Design, I, I don't know how to say it. Can you just say Design Brew? That is the one. Uh, he, his three, where he goes into his leaves pattern, if 
he, he can just always place that totem of fear in the center of it, and he will get taken out of his leaves and put into a state of fear, allowing him to be easily picked off from members of RIT. And and with that in mind, with that game plan, Guardian, do you like RIT's draft here, or do you think Wildcat are just going to get the sweep done? I don't know. I do like Wildcat's comp here, although I do feel like RIT somehow, I don't know, it just... They, they picked up the Chiron again, and the Chiron... They've got to show their worth somehow. Well, with that, we're going to throw back down to TJ, DJ, and Sir Waffles, who have got the game, and they are going to take it away for us. Oh, thank you very much, Fonty. Really appreciate it. So was, yes, hello, welcome back. Game number two heading your way between Wildcat Gaming and RIT Esports. TJ DJ here, Waffles alongside me once again. And I look at these drafts, uh, so Waffles, and we saw how good Wildcat Gaming were when we got into... They're not only good early game in those little skirmishes, but when it got to the full team fights, they looked out of this world. And I'm looking at this draft, just team fight, team fight, team fight, team fight, and team fight. So I think they're going to be pretty happy with that. It's team fight oriented where they're getting a lot of picks with the Athena and the Sobek really coming through. But the one change that RIT made this game, which I absolutely love, and it's not something that's been picked up too much, is this Yamoja, which we're focusing on right now. The fact is, I think Danzabara can provide the most damage out of the ADC lane early on. But if you have a Yamoja healing up, his pressure is really nullified for those first few levels. Oh, for sure. Uh, as you say, just taking it feels like just taking a bit, a bit of the sting out of uh, that lane for now. And also, you know, Yamoja, you talk about the uh, what she can bring to a team fight as well. This is uh, Trizzle on the Athena jungle as well for uh, just to add things up and uh, make him a little bit more spicy. You know, this Athena is uh, apparently a guardian, uh, but uh, not not seen in that supporting role just yet. But uh, we saw how Trizzle, uh, Trizzle was so impactful on that Gilgamesh. Why don't, why don't we give Trizzle a taunt and see what they can do? But something they need to be very careful on, and I'm going to go right back to it, is Yamoja electing to go into that Thunder and Spear. Knowing the front line takes Ooh. such an impact mm. into game number one. The fact if they jump in this time, they get Thunder and Spear, so there's going to be a lot of damage coming out, and the front line might die very quickly. There's a shield wall coming down, but a second tick of damage will not find any purchase. Both uh, laners and junglers are going to repeat back towards the mid lane. Trying to find now, just more trading, throwing abilities down, better poke from the monkey. But uh, that's pretty much going to be it. Do they know is where the action is? The Riptide able to get Noble out of dodge for that one, and Blue Bio has will be healed up and. Uh, well, there's a reason, uh, obviously, we're talking about how good this Yamoja is. Just saves Blue Biohazard from a first blood there. I think just about saving Blue Bio. The fact having to go in for that free ability just to get yourself out there, you don't quite have that healing, but it's a great skill management from Yamoja, not electing just to go, oh, I'm auto heal, leveling up my two for the heals. I'm going to wait and see exactly what ability I need for what occasion and just enough to get everyone out. Absolutely, and uh, you know, it's just one of the things as well as uh, Ponty and Guardian brought upon desk as well that uh, Emerger has such a high potential but also a very difficult kit to really utilize properly. So, if you play Emerger, absolutely fantastic, but if you can't, it's it's gonna be a bit of an issue, it could be a risky one. And speaking of, Sizex does take a nicer chunk of damage, but uh, back into the jungle and is gonna be healing up thanks to his uh, Bumba's dagger. Just try and keep him going. You can see here that uh, the king is getting a bit of pressure on that red buff. Looks like a Maiva actually just been helping out uh <laughs> if anything, with a little bit of a mini leash. But uh, once again, very similar to uh, game number one, we have a bit of action at the start. Unfortunate for Walker Gaming to not get that first blood, but we have this two to three, two minutes to four minutes of uh, getting that farm, getting a bit of pressure, getting those buffs as well. Farming up. Uh, mentioned right at the start of the broadcast when they were going through the bonus balance patch, Kulkullen and the Anis both received slight nerfs to their damage. So RIT Esports 
aren't going to be outputting exactly what they're used to, but they provide so much mobility mm. on the Yanis. They provide so much backline dive on that cool car lane. It's going to really come into effect as Ramoda mm. looks to do a little bit of damage on the Danza Barra. And again, that is a little bit of pressure you see out of the Emoja, which they didn't really have last game. Yeah, that was literally just off a of Riptide as well. <laughs> and <laughs> Agent Blair just immediately has to retreat under uh, Tower, forcing out the uh, Tricks to Spirit as well, just to hide away. Would have been a cooldown to punish, but, uh, well... Dan Flora just having to sit under that tier one tower. And yeah, uh, we'll talk about uh, the Yanis, you know, taking a bit of a hit. I believe it was the uh, through space and time, which is uh, what was targeted in that bonus patch. If I believe memory serves me correctly as uh, so, well, we're not really going to have much of an opportunity to really check that one out. So Isaac, uh, uh, eight. Yeah, able to get a bit of damage down onto the jungle, just having to retreat back. There's the through space and time used defensively just to give another way out for members of RIT Esports trapped in the jungle. And for Wildcat Gaming, they were they were so good early on in game number one. For RIT Esports to take them to five minutes and not give over a single death is, uh, well, certainly improvement. It's a much better improvement as we have a little bit of fight coming out here. Just waiting to see if the Humbat salt was used, but oh, the emoji goes in. The ports are over here, the river's rebuke thrown down, but I don't care about that one. Like Lil King DJ takes a huge chunk of damage as Noble is able to get first blood for RIT Esports. So I don't know what it is about supports getting these kills, but hey ho, bonus gold in the pocket of Noble, and they're gonna be very happy with that one. Defender of Olympus, there's a pluck looking for a uh, 30 for heater, but the spear of mortal pain shuts down the croc. The croc can certainly be stopped, but it has to get away. Janet enters the fight, utilizing that portal. Does not have free space and time that was used earlier on in the fight. But hey, two kills to zero. RIT Esports on the board and looking pretty good. They have a bit of priority as well in these lanes. It looks like as well that red buff was, uh, was taken by down the as well. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's fine. I, I think Agent Blur knew just wasn't getting over to that fight. Just take a bit of that jungle away. Make sure they don't get everything out of that fight. And from that first fight, I think you see the slight weak link that Wildcat Gaming has. The output of damage is going to be absolutely insane from that Merlin, but he is the one character that is really vulnerable to our Humbats Yamoja. If they were able to close that gap, as Humbats might be out of position here by Gold Fury. Looks to be a bit, uh, you know, you've got Blue Biohazard, you've got Noble, just uh, able to usher out Sizerx. And uh, again, you know, I, I don't want to be horrible here, but uh, Sizerx did, did not have the best of games on the Pella. But uh, give, give them the Hun Bats, and even if you are 2 and 7 at the end of the game, you still have probably one of the best ultimates in the entirety of Smite game in your back pocket. That is an ult that can change games. And here's a pluck onto the Anus. Looking for the portal. Will find it to get away. And also the uh, the nice uh, uh, draft excluder, I want to call it. Who, who needs actual ability names? Just a nice little bit of fabric you put underneath the door to get away. For that one. But rotation over towards oh, this duo lane. This is Sizerx looking for something. Has got the fear, no evil. Centaurus going to be forced out. There's the fear. The Rampacious Rocket CC immunity. He goes back in. He turns the fire onto blue. Biohazard. Centaurus can't save you if it is not a disaster for RIT Esports. They have to run away. Wildcat Gaming are not going to take this one lying down. They're going to keep grouping up in this death ball. Noble is the target in the jungle. The alluring spirits will not find a Riptide away just to get the Yamoja out. But, uh, oh, that, that that was not good to watch. That wasn't good to watch at all. That, that was, was pretty pain. Much. That was pain <laughs> if you're on the side of RIT Esports. But at the same time, I have to commend Wildcat. They had the idea and the execution. Mm. And in every game I would have played, if you got the Dancer Borough ult and you got him out of that, that would have been the end of it. I would have been very happy with that. You survived it. But they went for two buff invades immediately after the fight, and mm. they're going to get the Scorpion from it. They are really farming the XP off the map. See, so just uh, taking that gold lead a little bit more closer to even, but of course, First Blood is going to skew it towards RIT Esports. But hey, that means the gold is on that Yamoja as well. See, here's only 300. Not even a gold lead at this point. It's not even a tier one item. There's just a few uh, pots. 
barely yeah. even boots at this point. <laughs> and going back to that fight, I think that's why I think Merlin is the weak link for Wildcat Gaming. You just seen what happens when Dan Zabari gets ganked from the Humbats and Kyra when he's out of position. Athena has enough time to throw over. His ultimate gives him enough damage immunity that he's able to escape a lot of that damage and turn the fight. That's why I think RIT Esports really have to focus on this mid lane, keep the Merlin behind, and that's where their pressure is going to come from. Absolutely. It is a different, it is a bit of a change of pace uh, for looking DJ. The Merlin is not quite a 4 0 in 1 Raijin at this point, so it's going to take a little bit of time just to get online. If anything, just keep the, uh, just get that cooldown reduction up as uh, Vera Mortal Pain for a bit of immunity, Defense of Olympus, so utilizing this global mobility, there's four members of Wildcat Gaming, the River's Rebuke is going to be put down to try and get this coolant away, first if he's in a war cry as well, some assault cloud use, going to slam down, there is the kill, Dozen Slayer picking up that one, but at what cost, Fear No Evil was used, but no fears. It looks like no relics burnt either. So a little bit of a whiff. A little bit of a foul ball for that one. But uh, Barca Gaming able to equal up in the uh, kills. And once again, Agent Blur taking away that red buff. Incredible play from the Sobek there. Because I think RIT played it perfectly. They used the NFL to get Colin out of that fight. Second, he's about to go through the portal. All the way as Chiron's going to be all in place. Yeah, Rampage just rocket the Centaurus, but that only works when you get the kill. Unfortunately, as uh, Dan Zaboro able to find a second kill to add to their tally, and uh, much like with the Arnher earlier on, that's uh, two stacks on Transcendence. Merlin able to find the pull back onto Noble, and just to make sure they know about it. Wild Gaming, that's four unanswered kills for this team. Just to uh, remind us all that... Uh, they won game they won game one. You see here, they start to group up. This is what they did so well. Three members all around that gold fury. Just waiting for an opportunity. And they know that uh Blue Biohazard is just recalled. So this is this is gonna be a free gold fury for them. Absolutely free gold fury. And if you have a quick look at the minimap, the amount the of war. ward vision they oh, have Lord. so far up, it's gonna be very hard for anyone to cross that line and even engage it. You have a mm -hmm. Yanis ult, which can snipe it away from anything, but you need the vision on the Gold Fury, or you're just randomly guessing and hoping for the best. But Wildcat Gaming, the ward vision that high up the map, they're controlling the pace of this game yet again. You know what? Gold Fury wasn't taken because of damage. Gold Fury was taken because of superior intel. I'm gonna say. Uh, yep, that's I mean, how many bad. wards is that actually? That's uh, two sentry wards, one, uh, the oracles, as well as an additional one on the gold. we got one, two, three. I mean, I want to talk about wards, but it turns out RSEs was just want a fight. So it's a slave able to take down first the enchilada, spinning it onto the mid lane to rotation over to try and take down this. Uh, some Wukong just fell. Nice taunt, able to take out the beads cooldown, but this tower dive's got on a little bit too long. Tanking a bit too far, looking DJ though with the Merlin just throws over that Eclipse and takes a kill, six to two. And uh, Trizzle on this Athena as well. You, you said at the start, we have to be incredibly careful about this Athena. These taunts are going to be on point. And it, once again, it's it's Trizzle just dictating tempo of this game. It's a different style of jungler, but it's the jungler that I really prefer to play with. Rather than just going out and saying, I'm getting all the kills, it's I'm going to pick a character that can facilitate everyone else around me. And the mm. Athena Taunt is absolutely doing that. But as well as that, Athena is farming efficiently and then just using the ultimate once they know someone is about to go in or needs that help. So mm. it's not even losing time to go and gank someone. It is, I'm still getting all my XP. I'm still expanding my level lead and I'm helping everyone out. This Athena pick is absolutely insane at the moment. The one issue I've got with it is you've gone into Your full a damage. more damaging build, yeah. which yes, works out in the early game, but late game can be punished as Chiron is going to have a little bit of a fight here. Yeah, he's got the giddy up though, going to run away to level lead on a Dance of Burrow, but probably a bit closer for... Uh... Ooh. But so close with the River's Rebuke to catch out this Dan's Burdo. Still has Trampacious Rocket to get away if they need it. And that's probably why they're going to be sticking around. But Cyzerx, once again, is looking for the flank. 
but I feel like he is going to be spotted out on that ward. So they're going to go for the engage themselves. So Isaacs is going to blink in. There's the fear. No evil is going to land the fear on towards his Sobek. Rampage just rocket turns the damage back onto Noble. He escapes the taunt, but does not escape death. For Loki DJ picking that one up. A double kill in fire stance. And a triple kill at that as well from the burn. Once again, Wildcat Gaming turn this engage back on RIT Esports. And this is not the way I expected the team fights to go. I expected Wildcat to have a little bit more of the pick pressure, maybe able to get one or two kills here and there. But their team fights are absolutely insane. Whenever you think someone's slightly out of position, it's acting like a bait as Chiron might potentially get this one kill. Force out the lurking in the waters to keep the Sobek alive. Half health on this tower. Uh, Blue Bar has to know. It just has to concede it. But the half health problem is they might be feeling confident. That's more very aggressive looking for that kill. The spirits do not find their mark. So it enters the bat once again. Oh, just find a pluck, but it's going to throw Noble back. And this might be too much. The emoji comes in just in time. And Wildcat Gaming, they're punished for a bit of it, of, a, of the aggression. They got the T1 tower, but they wanted more. And that was their downfall. It still keeps them at a three and a half K goal lead. Yes, they got the tower, but they're lucky that no a real big objective is up. Goal Fury's not up, so while uh, RIT don't really have a way of capitalizing them really getting back into it, it would be nice for them to confirm their buffs for a change as red buff <laughs> does fall onto the Yannis. I mean, but... Major Blur's dead. You know, that's, that's a red buff going over to Enchilada for once. <laughs> Which is a really good thing, and I do like the way they're going straight to this Pyromancer, so really arms are back with a little bit of XP. And I think that, that might be their way back into this game. Yannis needs to have a little bit more of an impact mm. in this game in the utility sense. Wildcat are just getting to all these fights maybe three, four seconds ahead of everyone, and by the time the Yannis comes over, by the time the Emoja comes over, most people are already dead and the fight is over. You can't really turn that. Mm. So you need to be a little bit more preactive with the ultimates coming out of the Yannis. For sure. I mean, just looking at a play there to pick up the Pyromancer, if you remove the hood, take the names off and said, okay, which team made this play? You'd say that was a Wildcat Gaming play. They had advantage. They knew that Wildcat Gaming, thank you very much, Feet. Well, we can still see the uh, name tags, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but but you get my point. You know, they they identified that uh, Wildcat Gaming were on resets. They were in their own jungle. They're nowhere near the Pyromancer. Four players rotate over. And uh, hey, easy pickup. That one is going to be a free objective. Ooh. That is Beads Burt on the Yannis and the uh, being able to stop the block initially, but a portal away. The fight keeps going. Rivers Rebuke trying to split it up. Blue Buyer has to get the first kill of the match. Take it down. Trittle answered back by Agent Blur. It is an absolute cluster inside this jungle, but Blue Buyer has it. He's able to add a second kill. Completely able to free cast on this Chiron. Another pluck lands back towards the Hunter. As a giddy up to escape, but uh, there is going to be the final shutdown. Totem Slayers to take that one and a double kill at that for the Sun Wukong. on the blink in from Size X, falls out and ages on the dancer, but against uh, Fanny Fum with that uh, monkey as this fight just carries on going. It is a triple kill for the Wildcat Gaming solo laner and a deer side at 16 minutes. Deer side at 16 minutes and can that be something you say is a plus for RIT Esports there? Last game, they were getting decided and managing only to pick up one kill. That fight, they were in control for mm. half of it. They picked up three kills and they just didn't have enough to really finish anyone else. Oh, so Wildcat, although they come out ahead, they get the Gold Fury. It's a much better showing this time from RIT Esports. The Yamoja Humbats is a combination I have not seen in such a long time. The Humbats fear no evil into the Emoja walls and you are stuck in position and Chiron has a free ultimate and that is a lot of damage just ultimate coming out minutes. and able to take an early hit. The issue with that is that was three ultimates used on one character. Yes, it started the fight in their favor. They were able to pick up a couple of other kills. It's a lot of investment presuming they still want to fight you. Yeah, you, you, as, well, you hit the nail on the head there. You throw all these resources, even your health pools as well. You saw when Totem Slave entered the fight. Entered the fight at a very crucial time, but that was a lot of low health bars. No relics, no no ultimates, no nothing. All of it has been used, and the Sun Wukong is, uh, well, 
able to pick up a very nice triple kill for themselves and uh, able to take that to it was a three level lead over uh versus fajita but now back to two i feel there was a little bit of a level up this janice i i'm definitely liking the pick here pick here for rt esports not only because janice is uh, a pretty awesome god as all things considered but the ability to escape and also the riptide as well i do like this little pivot in draft but this is multiple members of RT Esports grouping up over towards this Sobek, the Fire Giant. You can see the Agent Blow is on the opposite side of the map once again. This is a 4 versus 5 Centaurus down the middle. There's the Fear No Evil. Low health bars. RT Esports, they find the fight they were looking for. They take down the Sobek. The Merlin falls as well. Blue Biohazard finds two. Dan's Zvoro here in the rapacious rocket is going to just absolutely nuke Blue Biohazard. A bit of a shutdown as well. But Agent. It's just a man on a mission. The defender of Olympus over the top. Looking to confirm these kills. Trizzle adding to what again? A triple kill for this Dan Zaboro. Double for the Athena. It is a yet another deer side for Wildcat Gaming. And that all changed on the internet. The second Dan Zaboro came into the fight and just absolutely cleaned up. Once again, they provided so much investment into that early fight and they got their reward. They got the few kills. So they had nothing left to arm for the Dandabara and the Athena ultimate coming back in and able to clean up. Mm. Once again, RIT very, very close to doing the perfect thing and it just gets turned around on the head. I can't fault the play, to be honest. It, that only turns because Agent Blur eventually gets into the fight. He's having to use Aegis as well to secure the Fire Giants. That was a close call. You can see there that the Serbek was uh, able, was, well, running over to try and help the uh, Hunter player. But I'm going to secure Fire Giant on all five members as well. And uh, Wildcat Gaming, five minutes from now in game number one, this game has ended. Absolutely yeah. terrific play from Wildcat there. <laughs> just... mm -hmm. it, it's a weird game when you can just watch a play happen in Smite and you can say, well, both teams did exactly what they needed to do there. It just mm -hmm. so happens that Wildcat came out the eventual winners of the play. You can't fault anyone in that for doing exactly what they needed to do. It's just unfortunate that I think this Dan Zabara is so far ahead in his build that the output and damage is going to be so much. The yeah. one plus side for RAT Esports is the later the game go goes, the less that Dan Zabara's advantage is going to really play out because your Chiron's yeah. going to come online more, your Yanis is going to come online more, your yeah. Humbats might be able to have a little bit more power and get these kills early on without investing so much. So you're still in this game and they haven't run away with it like they did with game number one. Oh, for sure. I mean, this is uh, currently about a, what should we say, 5.5, 6k-ish uh, gold lead between these two teams. But again, you're absolutely correct there as well. Agent Blur is incredibly strong. I mean, a triple kill in a, a fire giant fight, but he's probably not going to get that much stronger. It's near enough hit his peak. And as you say, this Chiron is going to get online. It's Giannis is still going to scale up better. So Wildcat Gaming, they are playing with a bit of a time bomb here. They are going to utilize it. They want to get this game over quickly. I feel like they know this. Tier 2 tower on left-hand side will fall. And they're going to go back in towards the jungle. Just utilizing this Fire Giant buff. Take all the objectives. That is a nice chunk of gold for removing all of these Tier 2 towers. I feel that's what the uh, game plan here is. You went back to that gold lead, and as you mentioned, tier 2 towers have now been stripped away. But the gold lead, it's slightly deceptive, because no towers have fallen on the side of Wildcat Gaming, but they are incredibly low in the mid, so that could be a lot of gold swing. If they elect to go for the next Fire Giant and Kyra and Lexus split push, that is more gold coming back into the favour of RIT. Yeah, they still have options if the Yannis ult comes through, and not quite able to steal that. No. An unfortunate one, but uh, I mean, this is uh, a lot easier. Well, it's a it's a lot safer a steal attempt from the Anis. And one thing I have to uh, praise once again is that ward coverage. Just anyone in my rank games, please look at this mini map. This is how you do it. <laughs> this is how you ward. But I will have to say for Wildcat, they need to ward here because the later this game goes on, the objective control may be Wildcats because they have the team fight presence. But these Fire Giants, these Gold Furies, can be stolen from a Yanis Snipe. That can be stolen from a Chiron mm. ult, and they don't have to be anywhere near the objective. It, all it takes is one of the damaging abilities to come through from a margin of safety, and you lose that objective and the game turns. So you're really looking to 
pick up early fights, try and pick mm -hmm. up one of the carries before you go for an objective, and that could slowly turn into RIT Tabor. Absolutely, just one steal. Because as this game is getting later, you're going to hit item break points. You're going to have gods that are no longer going to get any stronger. And then if this game goes, well, you're looking at Wildcard Game and they want to get this game over quickly, but this game runs a little bit longer, you know, past that 25 minutes, dare I say even 30 minutes. You're going to have pretty much all members in that full late game state. As the Rivers Rebuke is going to go down, not going to be able to stop the tier 2 tower falling. Noble able to use that Riptide just to get away. So that is an ultimate no. they could use for the defense here, mm. and I'm really surprised that Wildcat haven't just rushed straight into the Phoenix. Definitely sticking around. This is a very harking back to game number one, where they started the left hand side Phoenix, and well, I guess from their perspective, it is the left hand side Phoenix, I suppose. Once again, but a lot of posturing. There is a minion wave coming up. Pings down as well. So Isaac Stowe is on that left hand side, able to use the doors. This is going to be a huge flank if he's able to get off, but there is a ward right outside to stop him. Yeah, so far, RIT just hold that, the best block comes through. Yeah, you're going to look for the pit, they're going to try and take down Noble, no Rivers Rebuke for that one, but a Fear No Evil, that burns so many beats, and Lilki has to run away. The follow up coming through from 30 for Heater, but not able to take down the Merlin, but it's ultimately out of the fight. That is a shutdown on Age of Blood, and Dan Zaboro is out of the fight. Two kills on RIT Esports, and how much more can they get? There's no one else able to jump in. It looks like Tosem Slave just trying to stall, trying to get them out. But RIT Esports will find a crucial defense on this right-hand side. Great defense, and that is exactly what they needed to stay in this game. Wildcat taking the fight when I think they should have. They managed to pick your mojo, but they didn't have the damage to go. But the Humbats are absolutely mm. waylaying damage. Fear no evil, fear everything. I am running in every direction, mm. and no one is safe. See, so just even, like, in that fight, Lil King like burnt beads, but was just chunked out of so much damage. It doesn't matter what you burn at that point. You have, what, 100 HP. You cannot even breathe in the direction of this team fight. One lone uh, auto attack will take you out. Narity Esports are going to use this little bit of tempo advantage. I'm going to start up a fire giant as well. This is completely unheard of from game number one. Rivers Rebuke is going to split uh, the golf, uh, the Fire Giant bit into a bit of an alleyway. There's a very low Fire Giant. It will go the way of RIT Esports, but at what cost? A double kill for this Sun Wu Kong. Get out of there. Retreat. Run away as fast as you can. Noble just using all of these Riptides to escape. But I, I have to feel that... Uh, Noble is probably just going to stall out for time here. But RIT Esports, though, you look on the other side of the map, Percy, for he's just caught in between oh. four members. And a Fire Giant call does go sour. Still five members strong. They might even look to, uh, once again, go for completion when they have le left prior. They have mid prior. And now the minion wave crashing into this right-hand side. Phoenix down to half HP. He's going to take a huge defense just to just to stop any of these phoenixes going down the call is made retreat and back away uh, they have a lot of pressure on the left side with minions all in as they push into the middle it's a very nice taunt looking to find a pick onto um well they're looking for a pick onto wildcat gaming but nobody's able to, to take down the sobek tanking that phoenix a little bit too much i feel centaurus over the top and the fear no evil to completely disengage the fight as well Wildcat Gaming have been scared away, and that means the RT Esports can look to stabilize. A pick on to Totem Slave as well is uh, just the icing on the cake. Icing on the cake, and what we have seen so far up from RIT is a much better defense. They have a lot more tools in their kit rather than just waiting for one freeze, one pick. They have stuff to stop people running into the Phoenix. They've managed to save two Phoenixes here, although the right one has now fallen. The Humbat Spear No Evil is playing a huge part in this game. Mm. I thought it might have been used earlier as an offensive tool just to really try and put the Merlin behind. But now you're on the defensive, it can just do so much disruption. Even if you use that Yamoja oh, Ultimate yeah. early just to save someone or try and get a kill mm. and pick. You still have tools to push them off the Phoenix. And the Chiron is doing absolute work as well with the damage coming out from the Ultimate just forcing them to stay off. Wildcat are playing this well, but they're just really not able to push 
into that tower. Because I think Merlin just doesn't quite have that high damaging that other major does. Oh, pretty much down on that dance floor. I think is uh, engaged over towards the tier 2 tower on the right hand side. The Rivers Rebuke will split up the fight. Try and get members of RST Esports away. So it does take a big chunk of damage. He's going the war cry as well. Centaurus over the top. That is a huge chunk of damage once again onto Agent Blur. Retreats have been called. And have a look. Fire Giant is not here, but there's another engage on from Totem Slave. Blue Biohazard has got quite the bounty on their heads has been providing the lion's share of damage for RIT Esports in these fights. Let's back away on stable Vortex. Ooh. Hello and good night. So that was uh, that, that was actually uh, quite satisfying to watch. That was right at the end point where the two portals just touch. Beautiful. Careful rushing through the jungle chasing Yannis because he's just going to keep throwing damage back at you. And mm. eventually it's going to hit this Sobek has had a lot of impact with these early plucks, but he's really I'm struggling, sure. having died seven times in these fights. And Hold still, please. Do something again. totally different we've seen to game number one. A lot of death and your support means you don't really have the aggression that you once did. It feels to me that um, Waka Gaming is just sort of lacking this burst damage. The pluck comes in absolutely fantastic. You know, they, they uh, even plucked in blue with Biohazard uh, just a few minutes ago. But Merlin's not going to burst down a Chiron. Or just burst down anyone. In fact. Well, you're looking the at plus. And then you're looking for maybe the Athena Taunt to really secure that damage and really lock it in. But it's just not been in place. Athena going into the damage, I think, is really keeping her out of these fights. She's coming in late with the ultimate, but just not able to have the same impact that the jungler had in game number one with the Gilgamesh. Well... To be honest, it would take an absolutely Herculean uh, performance to have more impacts than that game one Gilgamesh, if I'm being perfectly honest. But here we go. We are reaching 30 minutes. I think it's time to ring the late game alarm. You look at all of these uh, gods on the side of RSC Esports. They are at full builds near enough. And a nice portal just to uh, keep Noble alive for that one. Again, I just love this uh, pick of the Yannis in the mid lane. Absolutely fantastic. Another Phoenix D is coming up. They have no fire minions as of right now, but the fire giant is on the way up. I have a feeling this is where we're going to see yet another fight. Yeah, and the Yanis has played this game going back to that a lot better with the portals. He always got the Emoja out of the fight, but there's been a couple of fights where the Quilco line has been picked off and there's been maybe a couple of pixels away from that Yanis portal getting out. It has been very fine margins. We have a fight starting up in the jungle. Yeah, bunch of ultimates throw down as well, especially out of Rivers Rebuke, the Lurking the Waters use as well. Supports ultimates are down. Some Taurus over the top gets a, a fair amount of damage onto these frontliners, but the backline is still relatively healthy. Oh, that's a very nice tour onto two plays, but the Fear No Evil lands onto Mortal and Sido is able to find a pick onto this Sobek. You have Totem Slave running away, but Agent Blur is still alive, still dealing out that damage. The solo laner for Wildcat Gaming will go down, but zoning out and doing the best job they can. This is a two for two trade overall. As once again, Fire I think, you know, Wildcat Gaming are going to be confident they can take away this enhanced Fire Giant. But uh, RC Esports are still lurking around, and there are. Some low health bars. Trizzle is only at half HP on that damage build. Gonna charge in. Love for the taunt. Finds two oh. members. Blue by Hatton. Good night. Athena. Um, Tyrant is forced into that Aegis. But oh not gonna get away. Uh, through space and time. Straight from downtown. We'll find one pack. That's four kills on for Wildcat Gaming. And finishing it off. A double kill for the first. The Enchilada. Wildcat Gaming. Get decided in that one. And this game, once again, is blown wide open. We have a set on our hands. Excuse me while I pick my jaw up off the floor. What a turnaround. And that is exactly the thing we've been saying all game about the Athena jungle. Yes, you've got the taunt. Yes, you've got the setup. But have you got the health to survive no. anything? You dive in <laughs> well, and zero. instantly blown up. Wow, just, what a uh, turnaround from it, <laughs> it just kind of let that sink in as well. Oh, boy. Just, and that is 
you're at the 30 minute mark. We said it all game. Yanis is only going to come online further and further. He now has that damage out. So he is absolutely killing people with these unstable vortexes. A couple of them and you're killing absolutely anyone in these fights. Wildcat really have to be careful on these engages now. RIT are kind of in the ascendancy. They're picking up the fire See the uh, zoning out as well. Fire Drive not going down. But there is the Fear No Evil just on to the Sobek. But Defender of Olympus to slam down and still have the Rivers Rebuke. And that's all three members of Wildcat Gaming and a fight very beautifully disengaged, I must say. That was actually uh, quite nice to witness from the spectator cam from that perspective. But Fire Giant is still there. Blue Biohazard over on the left hand side should be able to take that on Zoning Fury. Yeah, absolutely fine. Of yeah, course, we'll uh, soloing Gold Furies or any Furies is not quite as easy as it once was, but they see that someone must be on the left hand side. So there is the engage, but this, but totally, it's been split up from the rest of his team. Somersault Cloud straight back down, looking for this Janus, but a portal away back to safety as the follow ups keep on going. Wildcat Gaming, they find that first pick onto the hunt bat. Agent Blur, yet another kill. Centaurus trying to do as much as they can, but a fantastic punish from Wildcat Gaming. You have to feel. Well, this is just a free enhanced fire giant for them. Yeah, this should be absolutely free. The one thing that might possibly change that is RIT know exactly they've gone to fire giant and that Yanisol is slowly going to be ticking up whether he fires it Ooh, immediately or not. Gonna, he's got to fire it. Uh, I don't think he's going to have a chance. No. No, unfortunately, it's not going not gonna to be that quick. I, I did quite like the idea of uh, Charlie just like looking over the fire giant and just spamming that four key. Like, as soon as it comes off cooldown, it's just been thrown into it. that pit. <laughs> no, but, but... Uh, well, it is going to be the Enhanced Fire Giant. And uh, the, at, at the point here, late game smites, the Enhanced Fire Giant really is the difference maker. Not only the stats it gives as well, you're looking at that, just removing backdoor, but 75% backdoor protection, I believe, is removed from the Enhanced Fire Giant. It is the true late game objective. And Wildcat Gaming... Considering what we saw in, t in game number one, that's that's a, that's a scary prospect to see them have this. Yeah, absolutely. But the only issue is for Wildcat Gaming. Yes, it removes the backdoor protection. It allows you to go into these phoenixes whenever you feel like it. But you've tried to go into phoenixes, I think, three times mm. before, and they have pushed you off it. It doesn't necessarily stop the damage coming onto you. So the Humbat is still going to make a massive impact. And going back to just before that fire giant, I want to just point out that your Mojo played that absolutely perfectly and managed to wall off something. Something I didn't really bring up at this, in this game before is there's a lot of dashes on Wildcat Gaming. There's not a lot of leaps to go over a wall. Your Mojo can see the ultimates coming, zone them out. That's a lot of wasted ultimates for no damage if you can get that river rebuke correct. Mm. And we saw it in that Fire Giant uh, pit as well. Just four members. You, you saw them. They had to walk the long way around. And it's just a very easy walk away for RIT Esports. It's going to be another uh, Phoenix Siege. This time, though, to mix things up, it's going to be the left-hand side Phoenix. Or right-hand side for uh, the Chaos team for this one. But it's a bit more split up. Not all members are over on the left-hand side. You can see, but uh, this going to be... The AJ, that is the Sun Wukong just diving in towards the uh, throne oh. room to spell oh the through space and time. That is a good chunk of damage to Fear No Evil. Find so many members and Blue Biohazard is there to add in the damage. It is answered back, but look at these death timers. Look at the kills flying through. That is a double for the Hun Bat. Cyzerx has found that impact that we were looking for. Four players will fall on the side of Wildcat Gaming and now RT Esports. How much can they take? They're going to have to take a lot to take advantage of it, but what a Phoenix defense once again. Yanis got dived by the Sun Wukong and was like, okay, I might as well output my damage. I don't think I'm going to get out of this. Through space and time comes through, hits four members, and they're like, oh my god. 60% of my health is gone. I need to oh, run yes. away. They run away into a hum battle mm. and RIT absolutely clean up on the defense. Looking to take down the tower and they might even get a Phoenix for this. It's just chef's kiss. Mwah. Beautiful to see and even through Enhanced Fire Giant, as we said, a bit of a poison chalice for that one. As the tier one tower, tier two tower, and now the Phoenix in mid lane is going to fall. RIT Esports for the first time in a set. Knocking on doors of some Phoenixes. They do take the first one. 
37 minutes in. This all comes down to team play now. There's no, there's no more power spikes left. I mean, probably no chugging on those power pots. That's about it. Yeah, this is everyone pretty much at full build. I'm just having a quick look at the items. It looks like Emoja has just bought the final item, and that's pretty much going to be it. There's a couple of members with boots, and they could potentially mm. trade those out for a little bit more power, a little bit more tankiness. But this is as good as it gets. And for, if you're on the side of RIT Esports here, you're like, we've just won every late game fight at the moment. Yeah. Yes, this we're losing winnable. objectives, but we can still be winning this because if they try and push into our Phoenix, mm. we have proven track records that we can defend it and turn it around. So if you're on the side of Wildcat Gaming, you're going to have to think twice about really engaging and trying to get the hit. I think the Sun Wukong going into the back line is the correct idea, but it's forcing the engagement happening too quickly. I yeah. think you need to try and get the Sobek to get a pluck on someone and push them out of the Phoenix and see if you can waste anything on the yes. side of RIT. Yeah, it is uh, a bit more of a reliable engage from this Sobek. As uh, you see, you saw there that uh, Total Slave goes in with the Tiger Stance from uh, the 72 Transformations, but it just doesn't find that stun near enough. And then all of a sudden, the solo laner is completely cut off. And going back to uh, these item builds as well, you know you, you know that you are in late game smite when your support is selling their boots. That is the indication <laughs> of true late game builds for this one here. As uh, we go into another fire giant dance, and again going back to what you said, uh, Waffles, like Waka Gaming have had these sieges, but in the back of their mind, they've not worked. They're still no. in this game. This game is still going on. They haven't ended it just yet. And that's going to eat away at you. That, that just that, that small little voice in your head, you know. And if anything, it's for RIT Esports. This is a huge boost. They know that, oh, well, if if they get this fire giant, but we if we're able to rescue four members, we can still defend this. We are not out of this game just yet. I honestly don't even think it's four members. I think if you can get your humbats out and a carry out, which does damage, I think Wild Cat are going to be scared to walk into that Phoenix. And even mm. before the last Enhanced Fire Giant fight, we've seen that your Mojo Rock wall off four people. I don't think RIT had their full builds at that fight. Now they do. That damage is going to be coming out. I don't think mm -hmm. this fight is in favor of Wildcat in the jungle anymore either. Well, I like to think that... Uh, well, I well my my voice box is going to hope for uh, one more fight, but a Fear No Evil used very early Ooh. as the engage, but that is a huge ultimate down in Unstable Vortex. Finds a half of the HP of Totem Slave, and through space and the time, takes down Age of Blast Knight out of the entire map. Near enough, and size extent of add yet another kill. That is your solo laner and your hunter just deleted off the battleground of the gods. Its tension turns towards this fire giant. Wildcat Gaming, you know, they, they have to fight this. They can't give it up. Looking has recalled though, so it is all on Belly Bomb and also Trizzle. The River's Rebuke walls them off. Blitz it up and RIT is what secure this fire giant. It's Athena has to run away. You see the red health bar on the right hand side. Going up and Athena oh. Weevil, that was just used, it was what it feels like, but this is how long these engagers go. They take down the Athena jumping forward, Biohazard takes down Sobek. This might be the game, that is a double one! Holy! What is in these enchiladas? First the enchiladas with the Yanis Knights of the Sentry, and that is the thing RIT Esports had all That's game. It. If you build yourself 40% cooldown, you're going to use those ultimates, and those ultimates changed the fight, used twice in the final engagement, and absolutely won them this game. Outstanding. Holy. Holy moly. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I, I don't know what else to... Uh... Where'd you go from here? So, <laughs> right at the start of that fight, you said, oh, Humbat has used his ult very early. You have the cooldown to know you could use that to start the fight and end the fight. But the mm. ultimate used, although I don't think it necessarily picked anyone off, it forced everyone to go into one jungle corridor. The Yanis was well aware of exactly where they would be because they didn't have it warded. The Yanis like come through and does so much damage. And all of a sudden, you've lost your dance butter. You've lost your main source of damage and you have nothing left. Absolutely nothing left in the tank. 
And uh, if it wasn't plainly apparent, by the way, my friends, this is a set. And we have one more game coming up. Um, I feel like my throat is just in absolute agony right now, but oh yeah, we're gonna power through it. Uh, Haunting Guardian, what, what on earth did we just witness? Well, you can get yourself a drink, TJ and Waffles. You guys have earned it. Get some rest to those throats because you're gonna need them for that last game. Guardian, uh, what did we just witness? That was a hell of a game. Yo, don't put that on me, bro. I want you to answer what we just witnessed, because I've lost the words. Well, so what we just witnessed was a, a game of Smite Battleground of the Gods played by two collegiate teams. The game lasted about 41 minutes. It was a back and forth. And in the end, RIT Esports walked away with it. Is, is that all you wanted there, Guardian? Yeah, that's perfect. Anyway, let's go to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was... It was a very interesting game. I was... I assume you saw me in the in the chat. I was like, how does this game turn around? And I, I, I heard TJ and Waffle say about it too. Uh, you know, that Danza, he's got to fall off at some point. And when he fall and when he fell off, you could tell. Right. And I, I think if you look at the score lines to end that game, so much of what was going right for Wildcat Esports was on that Dunsaburo as well. I was thinking it was like 14-1 and something at the end of the game. 14-5. 14-5, sorry, yeah. But but even still, if you look in, at the score lines of all of the members of, of RIT Esports, there wasn't really one person that you could identify as, as the carry in that I, sense. Yeah. And really, I think what that game was, was, was speaking to the evidence of don't put all of your eggs in one basket because when RIT Esports identified that they needed to take out the Dunsaburo, the whole thing sort of fell apart like a house of cards. Yeah, as they noticed that, oh no, Blur's going to be a big problem, that was also when he started to fall off. So it was kind of a, he was kind of a double-edged sword that game. He started off really well, but then, you know, he progressed really well. And around that like 20, 30 minute mark, Bang! Just like Bitcoin, straight into the ground. And I, I, I just gonna say, I just really have to agree. Yeah, once once they turned that game around, it it really felt like all of the cards were in their hand. Yeah, and as she said, don't put your egg, all all your eggs in one basket. So, like we did have some other good players for Wildcat. You know, Totem Slave was doing pretty well and. Pretty disappointed with the Sobex performance. I'm not sure about you, though. I saw, in particular, one missed pluck that I think just really set up for a great team fight. I think there was like a missed pluck into letting the Hunbats ult come down. And it, again, you know, the, it's not like they were lacking for tools when it comes to setup, be it the Athena or getting a good Tiger stun in there. But if you miss those plucks, especially with that cooldown gone, you can be punished. And, and we see that the builds coming out from uh, RIT were designed to do that. You've got that tank buster build on the side, on, on the Chiron, including the Titan's Bane. And then they also had Obshard and Tahuti and Charon's Coin on the Yanis. So they they knew they were going into this this triple tank or triple bruiser or, or tank and yeah, two yeah. bruiser lineup whatever you want to call it and they built accordingly and and i think that really helped them this game too yeah you can tell wildcat are trying to go for a like full push in kind of comp because athena they built athena practically full damage like a stone a stone abiding and is uh, i'm all I know is that's the clone that does the bang when you get low HP and mantle you know, of discord. That is the one mantle of discord. Like that's they're two items. Mantle of discord does isn't it like 60, 30 proc? Sixty of each prop. Yeah, we, and that is a lot of procs for one item. But standard binding that's like thirty magical protections. It's I thirty say. of each as well. So you're looking at 90 of each plus 12% from from I. So so she was over 100 of each prop plus guardian base stat. She wasn't that that squishy. Yeah, she wasn't that squishy, but she wasn't dealing much damage either, which is a big problem or issue when you get into that late game. You can't be 
on the side of, oh, I'm not that squishy, but, oh, I deal no damage either. And that didn't work out too well for them in the end game, as we saw, because Danza fell off, and so did Athena, and the Merlin just wasn't able to do anything. The second that Merlin appeared, Thirteen and Chilada was like, yo, unstable vor vortex. Bang. Gone. That Humbats was wow, very nice. Right. It, it was, uh, and I, I'm pretty sure it was Waffles said this at the end of the game, this was a, a game of ultimates for uh, RIT esports, and, and you really saw it be either the Emoja Ultimate or the Through Space and Time, and there were some incredible Through Space and Times, but then we also saw these amazing Fear No Evils from Honbats to, to create space, whether it was in these teamfights or just to defend these Phoenixes. And, and, you know, the way they held on to be able to get to that late-game stage that allowed them to win that game, it, it's incredibly admirable, the, the effort that each of these guys showed today. Uh, yeah, it is. No member of my brain of RIT like did bad. Obviously, I feel like the Kukulun could have done performed a bit better, but I feel like in general nobody performed bad. Certainly, I, and and it was one of those games where everyone dies a lot. I mean, you look at the score line at the end of it, but as you say, everyone everyone played their part. And I think that's what you need to do to win these games, especially in these tournaments. Everyone needs to play their part. And one of the ways you could do that is find these gods that people are used to playing. And it, it looks like we saw some level of comfort coming out for RIT Esports as well. And with game three on the line, we'll have to see how they decide to go this. Will they decide to go back to their comfort picks? Will they decide to hone bats? Or will this be a game where they get those banned away from them? And Feed Machine, give us picks and bans. Let's see, let's see what the approach of Wildcat is after a loss like that. Uh, oh. There we go. We are gonna... What bans are you trying to see here? Do you think we, we are gonna see some of the Hombats ban? Because he was very... As I said, and I will say again, very nice. Well, so if we're uh, if we're looking at what Wildcat Gaming are thinking about after that first game, or sorry, after that second game, the the real big pieces I think of of game two there were the Yamoja, the Humbats, and the Yanis, and that's really what I think they need to target here. But that said, if you do that, you you risk letting some of the meta gods through, be it the Gilgamesh, be it the Tiamat. And it's it's weighing up that risk versus the reward of not letting them have those impactful team fighting ultimates again. Uh, yeah, those were very very big ultimates from. Yeah, and I feel like we might be seeing a tad bit more of the offhand plays. Maybe you know they already know what they're good at, so they're probably going to ban away that. And then I wouldn't be surprised if RIT come up with you know. Fafnir Jungle next game, or this game. Hope not, but we we might. I I'd be very surprised if we saw a Fafnir Jungle. I I don't know the last time that that was good or meta. I'm perhaps not sure if it has been good or meta ever in the history of Smite, <laughs> but we'll have to see. Instead, the Wildcat Gaming opting to ban away the set he has been in the ban column all three games. Perhaps something they know that RIT Esports can play, but. <laughs> They do stick with this little internal meta that we've seen crop up as the Yamoja is banned away. Are you happy to see that gone? Uh, I think the Yamoja performed very well that game with the River's Rebuke. There were times where I was like, I'm not sure if that River's Rebuke was useful, but I feel like all the times that I was saying like, yo, that was pretty good still. And then, yeah, it just worked amazingly for... Yeah, it just was good, really. And, and Yamoja is also a god that forces you to think about the way you're going to play the game. It, she's a god who can force certain relic selections as well. Sometimes you don't want to be forced to buy something like the Ankh or even maybe the them. So perhaps RIT Gaming thinking about some flexibility there too. Gilgamesh banned away again, important pick in game one. And we still see that tier map there as well. So for, for RIT at least, 
that leaves open some of their priority picks from the last game. And uh, yeah, but lots of their priority picks actually obviously sets me bad every single game. We are seeing a, another soul ban from RIT. She is a god that has been banned every single match of this set. Certainly, surprisingly, uh, like that. A, a a strong pressure mid laner, but with this, the Yanis is still available now. We still have that. Hunbats available from last game, the Chiron that's been picked every game this set, even the Danzaburo is still open. And it looks like Wildcat have opted for the Chiron again. I, have you been impressed with the Chiron play, or do you think it's it's time to let this one maybe sink a little bit lower in the pick order? Uh, I don't know. We did see uh, that Chiron did very a very good job of countering uh the entire of Wildcats. But I feel like it is... I wouldn't say Chiron's been that much of a substantial pick. I don't feel like if they let it go that the uh, that the enemy team would take it off them. Certainly. Although I suppose it, it also forces your hand. It kind of prevents you from picking some of the other popular things that you're seeing, be it the Fenrir or the Ares, those gods that just don't play well into the cleanse. Yanis, though, still open, and it does look like RIT Esports will pick up the Yanis again, plus the Sukayomi. Are there either of these gods that you've got any particularly strong feelings about? Uh, I've got I've got quite a few strong feelings about Sukayomi, but more general anger towards him. So things that I prefer not to say on broadcast is, you know, potentially things may come out about Sukayomi and I don't want those things to come out about him because I think he's he's a very good god that is definitely not a tad bit too overused. And Yanis, we saw his performance last game. I don't feel like that needs an explanation. He he did amazing. The Yanis was certainly an an important pick and and crucial to the way that they wanted to play that game. Now, as we do see the Ymir chosen here for Wildcat Gaming, I do want to pick your brains about this Tsukuyomi. Do you think that this is going to be Tsukuyomi in the jungle, or do you think we're going to see that solo, solo Suku here? Solo. I've not seen a jungle Tsukuyomi since... See, I'm going to have to look pretty far back, so we're just going to go back to reality, and we're just going to cancel that out. But I definitely think it's going to be a solo Tsukuyomi. He has not been... That good in jungle. Well, he's always been good in jungle, but he's been less good in jungle for quite a while. I, th I think he's still a, a high priority jungler in ranked at the moment. But you are right that in comp, I think those last little bit of nerfs to the mitigations in the ult have started to move him away from that top jungle spot. As it's the Scylla again for Wildcat Gaming. We saw Scylla in game one for. RIT Esports, I believe, and I didn't really think it did a lot. Uh, the Scylla? I don't know. The Scylla was kind of flimsy, to be honest. It certainly wasn't that linchpin of a comp that you'd like to see a high-damage late-game god be, as the with the Kuholan picked up on the side of RIT Esports, uh, something they went back to last game, and it looks like they're going to run it again today. It Unless we're getting this Suku going somewhere unusual, I do think we'll be having the Suku Yomi in the jungle. And with that, we move into the second ban phase. Any high priority bans left over for you? Uh, I wouldn't say there are any. We are seeing a versus ban for the first time. I'm not sure if the Pele ban is particularly necessary, depending on her uh, interesting performance in the first. Well, for me, because it's RIT banning the Pele, and they were the ones that played it in game one, whereas Wildcat played this really aggressive pressure style comp in game one, and Pele fits really nicely into that. So taking it away from Wildcat, especially given her position in the meta right now, does seem good. So I, I'm not I'm not surprised by that ban at all. Uh, Ying Wei, though, picking up by RIT, this is kind of a low-key pick that I was talking about. Although she has recently been rising in pick rate she i wouldn't say she's the strongest though uh she's kind of old reliable for a lot of adcs so i'm perhaps 
RIT going back to comfort. She also allows you to keep building crit, so maybe that's what they want to do here. And talking of crit, that looks like a last pick Mercury for Wildcat Gaming. How do you feel about the Mercury? I feel like Wildcat Gaming has lost RIT of one, and that is my call right now. If that does not tell you my opinion on Mercury as a god. So not not a fan of the Mercury. Or no, sorry. I do. Not like the Mercury pick. I feel like he is very squishy, and the amount of damage he deals, like, oh wow, he can kill Janus in like three hits. That is a that is great and all. But I just I don't think he's that bad of a god. I just think I'm bad at him. I have an internal hate for that god because of how many times I've gone into jungle up and like, let's have some port fun, play some Mercury. One in ten, every single match. But I feel like I don't. I just feel like he's a bit too squishy for the job that he does. He does the job well of being a squishy killer, but I just feel like the negatives for that don't outmatch the positives. Well, final pick here is the Ganesh for RIT Esports. So that'll round out the comp. A little bit more of a slightly backline support, can do a little bit of setup. Interesting team fight ultimate. Do you think this is nice round out to their comp, or would you have rather seen a different support here? Uh, Ganesh, he, he's been kind of a low key pick. He's never really been bad. I feel like he's one of the strongest support. But so I'm always up to seeing a Ganesh, you know? I'm, I'm fine with her and some DJ Oming in the match. And with that, we do have both of our teams all together here. And after a, an aggressive game one and then a completely different game two, is there a team here that you favor going into this rubber match? I, as I said before, I do feel like... I do like Wildcat Gaming. I feel like Agent Blur, he's been the MVP of this, of their team. And I would like to see him get some get a win here. Although RIT, I feel like they do in general have the better comp. Although it is going to be a Sukiyomi jungle. So I've been proven wrong. It is going to be the Sukiyomi jungle. So going down into game three. I hope you've had time to recover, TJ, because this one looks like it's going to be an explosive one, two. Take it away, boys. Getting concerned. Thank you so much, Haunting. And uh, yeah, thank you, Haunting and Guardian on the desk. Uh, TJ here with Waffles alongside me for game number three. And uh, how are how we, how we doing? So Waffles, are we, uh, 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 we I'm, doing good? I'm, I'm good. Let me uh, just wildcat with an amazingly strong early game. RT Sport knowing they can hold it in the late game. Let me just pick up my glasses. Wait a second. Why have Wildcat got the late game team comp and RIT going for the early game? Why have they switched it around all of a sudden? Why is Tsukiyami playing jungle? A god that can be made to look good by margin and hand of a highlight reel. This, day, this is going to be all on RIT to really come out the gate swinging because this Tsukiyomi needs to have the early game impact because Mercury and Siddler, that's all the late game you need. Minions have For sure, and uh, this uh, set has really came down to some very impactful ultimates. And uh, one thing that we don't see very often, well, first of all, is a Mercury, but uh, the Sonic Boom as well. That is a practically global ultimate. At this point, the range on the engage, if you can get it perfect, is absolutely fine. And it's something that uh, Waka Gaming can play around. Yeah. Um, just looking at these two team comps uh, as well, for me, Firsty Enchilada getting Janus again is uh, an interesting one for sure. Uh, after such a standout game, when the game went late, that is the kind of my uh, caveat, but uh, I had a pretty solid uh, performance early on as well. But Sizak's on this Tsukiyomi as well. You said you, know, you want to see RIT Esports really get into this early game, really take the ball by the horns. And it, it's a lot on Sizak's shoulder right now, especially after game one. Did The team did very well in game two to keep uh, T Trizzle under control, but Trizzle is back on that assassin. So there is some concern, in my opinion. I would say a lot of concern, presuming you haven't got that big team fight ultimate to really stop any pressure coming on Wildcat. You have to play the aggression this game. As your mirror and Kyra are already pushed up to the tower line, you can see the pressure is mm. once again going in Wildcat's favor in the early game. But Tsukiyomi is going to be the big impact because there's nothing to really stop his ultimate from really taking out one of these carries instantly. See here. 
taking down that uh, mid harpy camp and there are some low health bars in the duo lane near noble having to use the remove obstacle just get away but a frost breath a freeze and a once again support player gets first blood but agent blur is able to find the second blood for that one first to worst well second is the best i believe is how it goes uh two kills before the two minute mark wildcat gaming are back on the board very much like game number one that is a hefty chunk of damage from this janus just with two abilities as well but hey wildcat gaming this is their dual lane getting ahead and this is where they found success before uh, yeah, um, there's a slight discrepancy in the Smite community about whether to give your support first blood, whether it makes that much of a difference. For me, a support getting first blood is absolutely immense because it allows them to get their boots online quicker than the enemy support. And it gives you so much rotation into the level 5 fights. So I absolutely love your mid picking up that first blood, but Chiron, no slacking, able to really pick up that final wall. So picking up the two kills in the duo lane, but we have a lot of pressure coming out here. As I think TJ might be having some technical issues as Mercury does come in for the gank oh. and Ganesh is looking a little bit vulnerable here. Yeah, sorry, that was uh, that was completely on my end as uh, well. Ganesh is going to go down there. Was gonna, uh, I was trying to say, you know, is uh, Trizzle just blinking in onto that duel lane? Just so much pressure on the left hand side. Getting that uh, pick as well. Three kills. We're back to one kill a minute. And uh, again, for RT Esports, they need to stop the bleeding because this is... Okay, I'm going to keep bringing up game one because this is literally a carbon copy at this point. That's what happened. They yeah. got those early kills. Strizzle got the those incredible engages. Doesn't matter if he's on Gilgamesh. He's now on that Mercury. And even as uh, Guardian points out as well, you know, uh, Assassinate doesn't really like to see it, but we also don't like to see a Frost Breath just landing on the Yannis. Look at the happy feet. They're dancing around, avoiding the Ivan Monster. Silence now onto the Scylla. Turn back and RSD Esports will find something in return. Piercing Moonlight. Here comes Sizerx. Looking for this Ymir. Has no cooldowns left. And a kill for the Sukiyomi. Much better from RSD Esports. And they punish the engage from Wildcat Gaming. And that is the pressure you get out of the Ganesha. The silence is able to stop so much of that damage. And it was just about enough to keep Yannis alive that he was able to output his damage. Mm. The Tsukiyomi rotation coming in with the boots complete. That is what you want to see out of RIT. Really responding from those two early kills. But they've got the kills. They haven't really got any XP. They might look for this red and purple invade. But they could be easily punished here. But Chiron is alone in the left lane. See, so just that, the attention going towards this left-hand side. Oh, but, uh, it's yeah, not that's... going to amount to much. Meanwhile, though, in the solo lane, uh, I'm not going to lie, I forgot this lane even existed sometimes. That is a solo kill for Totem the Slave onto uh, Fessy Fajita. Fighting continuing over in the mid lane. Major look from the Mercury spins the Ganesh backwards and uh, Logan DJ is to get a kill with the crush for that one. And uh, I actually want to, you know, I feel quite bad. I feel quite bad about that. So uh, let's go over towards the solo lane. Uh, Waffles just very briefly, Guangyu versus Kukul. And this is a match that we have seen time and time and time again. Matchup you've seen time and time again, like you said, but now there is a twist in the fight. One you elect to go for that War X and Reinforced Boots, gonna be a little bit more damaging, a little bit more safe, but the Fighter's Mask start, which has been favored on the side of ROT Esports all game for the solo lane, it gives you a little bit of power. It does, it's quite a good power spike, but if you don't have that blue stone on Colin or you don't have anything to go with it, mm. one, you can just heal through it, and I think that's where all the damage came out. Looks like both ultimates were used in the fight, so I imagine Colin thought he had it, Guan Yu with the health pot healing, and just his innate healing. The ultimate comes out, and Colin can't really escape a Guan Yu, so I'm imagining he's just outputting so much damage. The fighter mask, yes, it's a power spike, but it's not anything safe. Reinforced boots might help that a little bit, but could be struggling here. As, ooh. Oh, there's a sonic boom straight on to Versi and Gelada. No way to get out of that one. The CC layering was perfect. <laughs> Able to take down the RIT Esports mid lane. And uh, well, this is what the Wildcat gaming composition is capable of doing. <laughs> as that engage came from behind the tier one tower as well. Versi and Gelada 
did have beats. That's just how quick he went. Did not even have opportunity to react to it. As Diamond Runs does come out, it's going to be very tough for CQM to get out of this one, but it's going to be forced onto the Scylla. I mean, that's a very long time to hold on to the Iron Monster, and Sizex does get the kill for his trouble. That one looks like uh, it's going to be the rest of the members falling on the wayside. Enchilada just portals in. They're not going to find anything. And just, just, going, just going back to uh, that engage from uh, Trizzle as well. That is what this Mercury is capable of. Not quite got... The, I imagine it's... Uh, if if my... Uh, I mean, I'm a bit rusty on a lot of item builds. I'm not going not gonna to lie. But Mercury, I feel like, you know, you, you want to get that early crit on the board as well. And it is a god you can really snowball to see the engage coming through. The masterful shot is enough. And that is a, just the freest double kill of your life, Agent Blur. Just didn't even break a sweat about that one. I, I don't really know... Where to go for that one? It just, you know, nonchalantly walks away. Cool guys Easiest don't look double... at explosions. Easiest double kill of your life and you still the purple buff. Which is when you go into that 2v1 fight, you're generally only looking for that purple buff. You weren't yeah. really looking for the kills, but the fact you got them is absolutely insane. And going back to that sort of mid fight that you're bringing up, there was two interactions I found really interesting and i want to see how they play out in the game mercury ultimate sonic boom you charge it up the length it goes it just keeps going they have a yamir on the team so you may put out the wall mercury's going to hit that wall and have something to use his uh three off that you can then chuck someone against and do a sh lot of damage in a very very short space of time mercury's a lot more safer with this yamir and also you said Scylla held her i'm a monster so long that is because sue jeremy ulted onto the Scylla. he is damage immune until that final frame so Scylla is just waiting for the ultimate and it just takes too much damage so sue jeremy ults once again yeah there's that piercing moonlight but this time it's uh gonna spell the death of sizex but that one work at gaming that is this is turning into a bit of a bloodbath here. Ten kills before the nine-minute mark. A gold fury as well. First Enchilada does have the free space and time available to them, which I hope they uh, probably want to throw around about now. But uh, no, this is going to be a gold fury going the way of Wildcat Gaming. You see the attempt there, but there's a cavalry charge as Wildcat Gaming want to go for this engage, forcing out that airstrike from the Jing Wei as well. But the support will give their life up. For the hunter to escape and uh i'm i'm getting flashbacks right now this is uh we need we need full damage control right now for our IT esports and, and going after game number two as well they're gonna still feel good that they can they can temper this aggression but you have to remember for game two that it took a lot longer for work at game to find these initial kills it was a lot more difficult for them and obviously from a draft perspective is why but this is this is something different. Absolutely true. The fact that Wildcat are beginning to really run away with this. Also, mentioning game two, that was a 40 minute game. If you were on the back foot for 35 of those 40 minutes and were only just about coming through in the final stages, that is a lot of mental strength you have to put yourself through mm. in game number two just to keep yourself in the set. It is been great for RIT just to keep themselves in this game, but Wildcat are beginning to run away with it. And I want to just quickly mention the solo laner of guan yu the cavalry charge used there after the gold fury fight and able to pick up a couple more kills i am looking at the side of rit you have a cut in solo lane and you have a ganesh once cavalry charge is used you have nothing to stop that guan yu doing exactly what he wants if he burns beads and stops them getting stunned fair enough but if they get stunned you still have a mercury with a sonic boom that can just come out of nowhere and end the fight and once that crit comes online it could be one two autos and your backline Janice is gone. Your backline Jingwei might not even have time to alter away. Just how quick it can uh, turn on a sixpence as well. And it, it's, I, I feel like that's, uh, I'm going to keep on uh, going back to that to engage as I have a little bit of a jump party, a bit of fun for that one. But of course, I mean, it does have the ice wall available. So not in any real danger but i feel like that uh the sonic boom engage a couple of minutes ago that was very much the start that was merely a warm-up that was a test for what was to come rt esports will find a uh, catch onto this guang yu takes a huge amount of abilities to the face including the portal agent blur oh. taking down blue biohazard in a solo kill on the opposite side cross breath lands back over here towards the fire giants as uh but 
I'm not going to spell the end of the action around this uh, pit, but the tier 1 tower falls over the left hand side and... Uh, Oh, oh dear, I think we need to go into full damage control right now. We need to really stem the bleeding. Agent Blur has been having a phenomenal set. And we know what happens when they are able to get ahead on a damaging hunter with Bluestone. So this game, Wildcat has a lot more CC and a lot more setup they can use to challenge. It's going to be slightly caught out. That's it's beast. just about getting there from away, but Chiron is not going to stop. No, the uh, remove obstacles knocking back up as uh, Biohazard on the Jingwei, starting to hit a few of them crits, but still nowhere near enough to match the power that Asia Blur is able to bring on this Chiron pick. Fire Giant is on the board. This will be an incredibly early uh, indication for Wildcat. They will take the Pyromancer, quite low level at this point, so it just simply melts. But it's an indication for RT Sports that uh, Wildcat Gaming are looking towards that side, the through space and time, uh, more emphasis on the time for that part of being a little bit delayed. Looks like this red buff will be stolen away by Sizex, but uh, I think I'll, I'll take Pyromancer over red buff any day of the week. Yeah, absolutely. Just Pyro allows you to sort of get back into that farm, and at the moment, I'm just going to bring attention to Agent Blur. He's really playing well on this Chiron, outputting a lot of damage, really taking advantage of his early game Transcendence Bluestone, which has a lot of ability damage and is really turning the fight into his favor. But I will say, I like that Jingwei has gone into the Gilded Arrow. I like that Jingwei is realizing I'm going to need crew at the end of this game. If I can hold out for another 10, maybe mm. 15 minutes, the second these fights come out, if anyone dies onto the back line, like that mercury if i beat it mercury can die a couple of hits so it is the right path to go for this jingwei going into the crit build but it needs to come online i think jingwei just needs to stay in that left lane on your screen and bump 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 forget whatever's happening in the fight because i think wildcat have just so much control of ejectors right now mm. all right it feels like it's... on the farm it feels like as well that you know wildcat gaming are the ones that just want to fight as well so he's RT Esports, it's going to be playing into their hands as well. I do agree that uh, you need to see Blue Biohazard loading up a bit of farming simulator on the other monitor to keep them in the game. And also those free deaths as well. Not necessarily just like giving the uh, gold over towards uh, Agent Blur, making uh, the car go online quicker, but it's also Jingwei. With, even with the passive, that is a lot of time that you're missing in lane. That is a lot, that is uh, quite a number of minions hitting that tower you're not getting the xp from them either so just pulling that gold lead even further than what it feels like because uh right now 4k early on as uh, there is a free space and time i'm a monster is used to secure that one just to make sure the janus can't steal it the silence is onto totem slave there is a sonic Ooh, boom landing onto all five men well, four members for that one just to get out of the fight. Totem Slave is the sacrificial lamb, but a gold fury secured for Wildcat Gaming. Sometimes you don't want to refer back to previous games because of just how well Wildcat have given as Chiron is going to dash in on Jingwei. I don't think Jingwei makes uh, it out of this one either. It's not even worth commenting on, to be honest. <laughs> that, um, oh, that is just not what you want to see at all. We should have a disclaimer. Uh, <laughs> whenever we switch over to Agent Blur's perspective, just in, in the bottom right hand corner because that was vile uh yeah, anyway no jingways were harmed in the making of this game they oh i think they definitely were <laughs> <laughs> for sure you can just see there that's what free auto attacks and look yeah. at the health on the sukiyomi oh my word and your mirror's coming in to try and get the freeze and sukiyomi is going to be forced to beat away yeah. there's three members here but i don't think agent blur has any intention of stopping <laughs> just having the time of their life really but yeah, going back to anyway, <laughs> going back to it, I don't want to keep bringing up game one and game number two because it kind of just shows form. Game number one, this is exactly what happened as a repeat. Game two, this is exactly what happened except RIT were able to weather the storm. Characters Wildcat have picked this game. They have a Scylla, they have a Mercury, they have mm. a Chiron. That is more late game focused, so they're not going to have the same drop off they had in game number two. And if they're running it this early in the first 15 minutes, it's going to be a really big struggle to get out. And that is a great portal and use of Ganesh. Yeah, the uh, remove obstacles, remember. Uh... Handy tip as well to remove obstacles does allow you to dash through player-made terrain, including 
He means Ice Wall. No doubt as uh, Ice Strike is going to be used by Blue Biohazard. It looks like Agent Blair will let the Jingwei live this time, is what it feels like. This time. Yeah, but uh, there's going to be an engage though as uh, Sizex finds himself in, well, in a whole heap of trouble in the middle of the CC chain. The, just the synergy between jungle, mid, and support throughout these mid-game fight have just truly been on port point for Wildcat Gaming. Every single time, the CC is layered perfectly. There's no opportunity to outplay, to dodge, whatever. It feels like Wildcat Gaming is just be control. And this Fire Giant, who is facing time, ends up just leashing for them in the end. And this is going to be a secured fight. And now, what can they get on the end of it? Pushing forwards? space and time and the portals from the Janus means that uh, it is just going to be a clean fire giant. No other kills going their way. Time to get these lanes pushed up. It looks like right tier one will be the first point to call. Yeah, I think they're going to push these two towers in the right and maybe back for that gold. But while well, okay, it's very difficult to see how you can stop them because you just don't really have the gods that can deal with them at this stage. Jingwei is the one I'm going to keep going back to because I think the crit can make a difference. I don't necessarily agree with the rage pickup because you have not been involved in any mm. of these fights so far, so your rage is really going to struggle to be stacked here. Well, hopefully we're going to say, you know, glass half full. It's an indication of RT Esports to get this Jingwei in the fights, but then again, I don't... I think it's more Walker Gaming just looking to put pressure on the Jingwei. It's not really their, their choice to go into these fights. It's they're normally the target of these engages. Walker Gaming know that they have to keep the Jingwei away from late game. You can see that uh, Lil Kid DJ just headed over to that duo lane just to scare away Blue Biohazard. Just to keep on delaying it. So it's just like Balance Blade picked up as they is most likely going to go into that Assy. Followed by uh, Executioner as well, just continue the build. But uh, yeah, the Rage one is uh, is an interesting one. You know, will this be an item pick that uh, Blue Biohazard will rue at the end of this game? Uh, I believe so, because it's just not going to quite come online. And I think this kind of brings the attention to what they mentioned on desk, where picks and bans are so important. Wildcat, I think, ran game two the exact same thing. The one difference in game two is your Mojo had a lot of healing to get people out. Yannis portals were just about there to keep people safe. So this game, they've got the Yannis portals, but can't really use a portal if you've already died and have no healing to really keep you staying through these fights. And Wildcat just keep running this map perfectly and hit hit that like seven, eight K gold lead. And if I don't know how RIT sort of get back into this at the moment because. I don't think they have the Phoenix defense they have they had last game. Mm. It's just gonna be a really big struggle. Jingwei needs to farm in the left, but Chiron hasn't actually moved from that left lane. He's still applying that pressure. George is continuously throwing minions under this tower. It's good obviously, you know, Jingwei is able to farm off them, but uh it's leaving the safety of that tower to guarantee as it looks like it is going to be a potential dive over towards the tier one side, but multiple members grouping up on the left hand side, a dark pillars are thrown down trying to split the fight trying to disengage and it will successfully do so through space and time does tag but does not one shot just yet tier two tower on the left hand side will be the attention here and it does fall oh no and just look at the health bars on the side of wildcat gaming three ultimates were used in that fight and you still have one healing to top you up no health has really been lost they can just keep flying this mm. press and keep pushing yeah, and I want to go back to uh, what you said uh, just before that dive is that uh, RTS was not really in the position they were in game number two for these Phoenix defenses. And I feel that's more because in game number two, RT Esports, even though they at the start of the game, they were on the losing end of trades, they were getting one or two kills. They were getting objectives. They were getting XP. Wasn't much, but it was a little bit here and there, which obviously is going to be they're in a better position all these Phoenix fights, but Walker Gaming have given them absolutely nothing to work with here. No, absolutely nothing. And Yanis kind of had a great game too. And I understand the sort of build path the Yanis has gone here, kind of sticking to that same cooldown build with the damage that's going to come online later. But on the side of RIT, you have nothing to stop the Guan Yu sort of healing them out of mm. combat. If they get a Fire Giant, which does heal you slowly over time, they just have to disengage for maybe five, ten seconds, and everyone's going to be back mm. to full healing. You've got nothing to stop that. You have no curse dunk if they full dive you. The friendly pickup on the Ganesh 
it might come into effect if this game goes for another 40 minute game, but the way it's going, it's not a defensive relic. There's a lot of aggression mm. coming out on the Ganesh, which made sense from the comp and the start of the game, but it's just falling off and you've got no answers for whatever Wildcat want to do. To support the ultimates, we used over on the right hand side, but it is only going to be the trade. Totem Slave did have to use the cavalry charge during that one. I'm not sure if that was to engage or disengage, but either way, it was used and it's going to be on cooldown. I mean, I would I would count Kakula in ultimate, but it's on such a cool, short cooldown anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much in the long run. But here, Fire Giant, once again, he's going to be spawning within the next few seconds. And this is where I would love to see RIT fight this Fire Giant. You have no chance of really winning it, but Jingwei is over on the left side of the map. You can provide a little bit of pressure, maybe by a few 10 seconds, maybe for that Jingwei to maybe push down this Phoenix. You've got your whole team over there, but no one's pressuring the Fire Giant. You know you all have to back mm. now. Yep, as you can just see that, yeah, five recalls instantly. Blue Bio has, the, has fought a little bit of time in that left lane. You see that uh, Trizzle and uh, Lil King are going to go over. Just clear one minion wave, and that is going to slow stack as well. There's no way that uh, any member of RT Esports is going to get anywhere near that wave. So right now, that could be left to just slowly build up and have a huge group of archers. But, uh, well, Agent of Players going to decide instead just do a hurry things along just a little bit because Waka Gaming, they have a schedule to keep up. You know, they have uh, they have games to it end at this point here. And again, we we look towards RT Esports. It's gonna take a huge show. It's gonna what 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 do RT Esports have that could possibly save this game? You have the advantage that you know Wildcat are going into these Phoenix fights with confidence. So you're gonna have the Guan Yu dive the back line. The Ymir has the blink and is gonna play aggressive. If you can get the Chiron out of the fight, that is a lot of their objective pressure kind of just dropped mm. off. You might be able to save a Phoenix and stop the push and farm a little bit into this game. So you've got to put all that effort onto Chiron. You have the Tsukiyomi to do it, but maybe a Yanis snipe or the Jingwei just to really dive in. It's going to be a lot of commitment for a hope. Speaking of, there's going to be the Blink and the Cavalry charge, but the first thing for Heezer goes in on their own as well. The Blink Spear of Mortal Pain does find a knock up. The Dharmic Pillar is committed as well. And there is the first pick onto the Guang Yu. Piercing Moonlight goes down, but not really one that uh, Sizox wants to follow anytime soon. The Crush Hughes just to buy a bit of time. And they will get the pick onto the Guang Yu. Called it as well. The Waffles, you know that that Guang Yu is always going to use that cavalry charge aggressively in these fights, and they were able to punish it. It's it's a very, 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 very small step back into this game, but it is it is progress nonetheless. A small step that paid off for the Ganesha at the early game. When, going into that Thunder and Spear early, you wanted to have the aggression, but now you're on the back foot. Mm. If you're going to use it on the Guan Yu, who's going to just keep charging in and you dump all your damage onto the Guan Yu, you can pick off one of these characters. Congratulations. And Wildcat elected to back off retreat, farm back into it because they haven't quite hit full bill. But if you use everything you have to kill the Guan Yu, what's stopping the Amir from walking in? What's stopping the Chiron from doing all the objective damage? Yes, it was a good pick. Yes, it kind of gives you a little bit of hope going into this game. You still need to find the damage to output on the other targets. Just feel like uh, just approaching this absolute mountain to climb. RT Esports just now pick have decided to just look up a little bit and see the challenge that is in front of them. But uh, every well, I can't remember. Oh, they are completely like brain farted on the uh, phrase like um, <laughs> like uh, uh, what one step begin. Oh, what is it? Ah, that's gonna annoy me now. Um, uh, distraction hat dance. Yep, that that works. No right, one's paying okay. attention to it. But, uh, if you want good news for RIT, Jingwei has got one stack on the Rage and Mercury has one stack on the Rage. So Jingwei is slowly catching up to the Mercury's power level. That, that's a positive. Yeah, we, we, we are we are trying to find the positives. You know, glass half full for this one. Uh, but we are also at 25 minutes as well. So I have a, I have a feeling that five more minutes is... Uh, the, basically, the, as this game goes on, you know, RIT Esports are going to look and better, but you know, we've highlighted this several times now. Wark Gaming do have a number of late game picks themselves to make this even more scary because we talk about uh, we didn't really get to see it in game number one, the late game Scylla as well. This is a pick that has been dominating 
the top tiers have played for so long recently. Thank you very much, Paul, uh, for showing off that at a sm uh, to SWC uh, just a few short months ago. But uh, oh, this is uh, this is gonna one shot you. This is what Scylla does. It's, it's Scylla's bread and butter. You have the safety from the Sentinel. You're at level 20, so all your abilities are going to be maxed out with their bonus effects. You're going to have the additional magical power as well. Scylla's going to hurt if any of those, even the Sikkim as well, does a surprising chunk of damage before you even get anywhere near the crush. You're putting a lot of emphasis onto Scylla, and as much as I agree with every single one of your statements, Scylla is the lowest player damage in this game because... R.I.T. just keep dying. Before the Scylla can really make an impact in these fights, everyone is automatically dead and Scylla is kind of just left just holding the bag going like, I could do stuff too, but, but let me do stuff. As <laughs> they all kind of pressure around the fire giant, but... But it's yeah, it's just, um, just kind of being the general sitting in the back, like, go on, go on, you all go forward. I'll, I'll catch you up. But yeah, 4,431, yeah. Uh, Blue Biohazard has higher play damage than Scylla. Not really what I was expecting, but uh, as you say, it's just the way that this game's going. Our esports are not long enough, uh, alive long enough for these fights. Frenzy popped. That is a very quick uh, pick onto the Fire Giant. Ooh. Wasting time. Does tag the Mercury, but uh, a bit out of sustain, and also the Guang Yu as well. It's going to be healing that top. That is a early bead. I don't know. No beads on that one. That was the Magi Cloak uh, being popped there, picked up by uh, Sizox. Looks like we're back to the good old Phoenix Siege between these two teams. Uh, the Phoenix Siege, but Yanis used his ult to really try and snipe away the Fire Giant. Which, yes, again, understandable, but Wildcat going to elect to recall here. That is your main damage deal. You've seen what it did on the Mercury, where Mercury was perfectly fine and happy, and all of a sudden his health is down to about 40%. That is mm -hmm. going to be their main sort of source of stopping Wildcat pushing. If they can find that damage on the Chiron, if they can find that damage on the Mercury, it might just stop a couple of the pushes. But once you kind of get to this level of being 13k down, even if you manage to wipe and get a side on Wildcat Gaming, you have so much work to do. The cooldown timers are not quite there. You you can maybe close the goal gap, you can get a couple of items online, but then you still have to prepare for a Venus defense. You're going to have to do this, I think, two more times if you want to win this game on the side of mm -hmm. ROT. And one thing they also need to do as well is find those shutdowns. There is a shutdown on Agent Blur and also on Trizzle available. It's just getting that goal leader, getting to that point. Take this opportunity to look at some of these item builds as uh, Bob. We buy Hazard, as we said. Oh, I wait for the Executioner. Instead, they're now going into another crit item as well. I believe that's probably going to be... What what crit item are you expecting there, Waffles? Uh, I would expect a Deathbringer. I would have liked to see the Wing Demon a bit earlier, but I think that's going to be if you sell boots, you get Wing Demon at the end for a little bit of safety and attack speed. But once again, there's no items of anti-healing in the mm. for So that Fire Giant and that Guan healing, unless you instantly kill someone they're just gonna slowly heal it up and frenzy has been popped yep that is gonna be the go call but it's gonna be an engage as well by rt esports the phoenix drops very quickly but rt esports are now in ascension they have the first pick onto trizzle i'm a monster used to get away gonna escape the silence that movement speed slams down not gonna find the pick but there's the first shutdown there's a second as well onto the mid laner and the hunter that's three picks you may gonna go over the wall be followed through by a thirsty for heater just trying to delay as much time as possible but rt esports they find the pick they find the fight they were looking for that is a huge chunk of gold in the back pockets of crucial members and this oh, game oh. starting there's definitely more nice. progress Keep it going. Uh, i was gonna say stop your mid back in you've got jingwei pushing you've got ganesh pushing you might be able to get that left phoenix before the respawns drop for the only fury mm. this could be your way back in the fact they stopped your mid back in is absolutely huge the fact that Tsukiyomi is stopping the guam from stopping the phoenix going is huge they have played it immensely well pushing back against the phoenix and this is going to be there oh Merc's going to be up with an ult though Guang Yu just running up. Sonic Boom as well. Trying to retreat. Get out of the line of sight. You can see the charge as well. Remember that uh, Trizzle has to charge up before they use it. It's not just an instant teleport. As uh, uh, many of them is still running around on this Ymir. Just taking up so much time from Percy Fajita. But this is going to be an incredibly stalled out 
Ymir, as RZ Esports even going to take the only Fury as well. Ymir will eventually go down. And now RT Sports, I think they ha they have some tools to work with now. Birds of Marker Gaming, there's a sonic boom. It's a pick on towards this Ganesh. The silence will not help you, my friend. And down they go. Trade of supports. But uh, the only Fury will buy a little bit of time, I feel, from these waves. A little bit of time bought from the only Fury, but the fact that Byron has been instantly cleared. The Ymir doing incredibly well. I, I said they did great to stop the Ymir from backing. And that allowed them to get a Phoenix and the only three. But Yamir bought so much time for the team to respawn and even push up onto that uh, Fury that they were able to pick off the Ganesh before he got through the Yannis portal. And that stopped by Giant Push, in my opinion. You can show face, but I think you have to retreat if they're here. And Chiron is doing a immense amount of damage, just going to burn a lot of objectives very quickly. That is uh, going to be a near full build, just the boots to be sold to complete. Uh... Agent Blur's build for that one as well. Karin is well and truly online, but so is that Jingwei with the death being completed. And we did say uh, about this time 10 minutes ago that, uh, you know, Jingwei needs time. And I think we're finally there. But I will it's amend taken my statement. so long. <laughs> I will admit my statement. Jingwei needs time and space to actually land those autos. As you can see, again, Jingwei is the lowest damage on the team yes her damage potential is there but she is not able to make an impact in these fights and just like that fire giant blink and you miss it it has fallen as well no ultimates used as well to confirm because that's just how free it is let's have a walk at gaming as we are now 33 minutes now i can see some of the uh, level 20 choices being picked up by both of these teams waffles just very briefly before this uh Phoenix Siege, what do you make of the uh, level 20 choices on these items? Uh, a lot of cool. Um, Mercury is a little bit surprising going into that level 20 item when you haven't really been making an impact for the past 20 minutes, but you're still doing a lot of... Te oh my god, that Phoenix has just gone in the right lane. Just, uh, it's, it's just no chance. You have Trizzle and um, Agent Blur. The line share of the damage, pretty much this game. Blink, literally, blink and you'll miss it. It's gone away. Now, where, what does Wildcat Gaming decide to do? I feel the safer option is the better option. We are at the point that, say, if RZ Esports can pull off another Phoenix defense and do it cleanly, but uh, Wildcat Gaming, they want to go. The Dharmic Pillar is already forced out and some low health bars as well. RZ Esports are going to hold on for now. There's a the blink in from the Guangyu. Looking for the cavalry charge, but it in goes the solo lane of RT Esports as well. Frenzy popped. On one side, another heel comes through, piercing Moonlight over to multiple members, dashing between the two, and Sizex takes down Trizzle as it's going to keep on going forward. But Lily King is there to find one with the, just the crush damage, I feel. Backing away, he's got some very low health bars. Agent Blurdo, full health, full mana, free casting, holding left click, and slaughtering their way through the RIT Esports line. It was a spirited defense but a fire giant chiron who's so far ahead at full build is no match at this point they take three kills they will take the life of the solo just one more auto that buddy come on you can do it come on come on there we go perfect titan is the next call they don't even need the middle phoenix for this one you have a chiron a frenzied chiron at the titan to close out this game there is nothing first enchilada can do GG well played to Wildcat Gaming. They take the series two to one. Much better Phoenix at the end from Wildcat Gaming. And we've seen it just before where ROT had just enough to keep them pushed out and really find a comeback kill. But all the damage they were able to put out in that final defense took out your Trizzle Mercury, and that was it. You still had the Chiron with the Enhanced Fire Giant one healing. He was absolutely fine in the back line. They just picked off the objective, and you have nothing else to combat it once. You've used everything, and you've disengaged, and you've just allowed them to heal up a couple of ticks. That was it. Well, there we go. That is going to be it. So once again, GG well played to Wildcat Gaming. Some incredibly exciting games that uh, we have been able to witness. Absolute barn burners, all of them for sure in their own right, but they are the ones that are in. And commiserations of course to RTE Sports. A spirited 
performance throughout this entire set as well. Never completely out, even when Wildcat Gaming were truly knocking on the door. Some fantastic Phoenix defenses and just keeping the faith, keeping some belief as well. You have my respect for that one. So, uh, Waffles, thank you so much for uh, being on this journey with me throughout this set. Uh, your your closing thoughts? <laughs> Just an absolute set that was kind of unexpected after game one, but I really did enjoy both these teams pulling out all the stops, showing everything they could, and just one team just about edging it in the early game and snowballing it from there. Well, that is going to do it. Uh, we're going to throw one more time over to the host desk to close out today's stream. That's all from us. Haunting and Guardian finish this off. Thank you so much, TJ, DJ, and Sir Waffles. And TJ, you there spoke about a spirited performance from our teams, but a spirited performance by our casters as well. Marvelous job, guys. Not an easy set to cast a long game in the middle there, and truly action-packed to these last two games especially. So great job, both of you. And great job, Guardian 2, who will be joining me to break down this last game. Not quite a repeat of game one there, but certainly shades of it as it looked like an early lead again from Wildcat e Gaming, and then they just took a little bit longer to close this one out, but nonetheless still looked like it was their game all the way. Do you have any concluding thoughts on this set here? Uh, it was kind of a bit of a flip-flop. At the start, you could tell that Wildcats were kind of getting that stride that they did in game one. But then there were points in which you were like, maybe it could be RIT that have a chance there. I, I, I do have to agree with you. And I think RIT showed us in game two that you can never take anything for granted in these games of Smite. No lead is truly secure. And, and I really did think we might get perhaps another dramatic turnaround from them. But in the end, it proved that the defense that they were able to put up just wasn't enough. And with that, Wildcat Gaming will advance to the finals or the semifinals, sorry, of our collegiate division. We don't know who they're going to face yet in the semifinals. So you'll have to keep an eye out on any news on our collegiate division. And if you want to do that, then the place to go is head on over to Twitter and follow at Albion Giants. And you can catch more broadcasts from the Albion Giants team from our NA team tonight on the channel. 7 p.m. on Eastern Standard Time. Or if you're a night owl over here in the UK or in Europe, that will be Midnight BST. I've been Haunting. He's been Guardian. Thank you all so much for joining us. As I said, if you want to follow any more along, please come over to our Twitter, join the Discord. We're also taking signups right now for Season 6 of the Albion Giants League. So if you enjoyed what you saw and thought you'd want a piece of the action, come along, find a team, sign up, and... Take part, because it would be great to have any more blood in the scene. I've had so much fun tonight. Been great being with you tonight, Guardian. Once again, want to shout out to TJ DJ, Sir Waffles, and Feed Machine. All did fantastic jobs, too. Thank you again, everyone at home, for joining us, and have a great week. Goodbye.